my name is Andre. It is the 9th of March, Patrick informs me. Speaking of Patrick, how's it going, man? Hey, everybody. I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing good, man. It's one of these. We haven't done one of these in a while, which means yeah. we have to pull up this microphone that I'll be honest. I think it sounds really <laughs> bad unless uh -huh. you're like listening mobily and if then it may be OK. But headphone users, buckle up. <laughs> been a minute man how you doing it's nice uh, to see you in person yeah it's nice to see you in person too uh, are we were you uh, keeping up the fiction that we haven't hung out in person since the last time we did a stream together no okay yeah it's been a been a while man how about you it's been good it's been I, great uh, yeah pat and i we play board games on the regular andre don't think your mic is on <laughs> <laughs> hi well yeah. wait, okay so so actually it sounds great then uh wait do you want to say something and see if we can hear your levels <sighs> let's just do it again hold on <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Metropol Grid, where I use the microphone I don't use very often. It has a switch on it. I specifically got it so I can mute myself. It sounds bad. Um, hey, everybody. It's me, Patrick. You could hear me the whole time, so this isn't surprising. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been that's welcome. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Actually, yeah. I totally forgot. You could have let me go on for a while. <clears throat> I think your mic night might be might not be on. No, it's not. Um. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the channel. Firstly, hello to all the folks who are maybe new here. Hey, mm -hmm. uh, River a &R. Also, how's it going? Hey, River. I think I recognize that name from uh, yesterday evening. Cactus, how's it going? Ixaran, you're a giant isopod. Kalana, Genchling, Seabass, <laughs> Ian. Hopefully, you're all doing well. Hey, see, how's it going? Sounds great. No, this one doesn't sound good. Pat has the good one, which, like, I don't even think he needs it. But we Okay. It well, him, yeah, know? I do have a face for radio, as my parents like to say. Hey, sure. SM58s? Yes. Yes, that's this one. Yeah, not the other one, of course. Ixaranda is flexing their microphone knowledge. Mm -hmm. No, this is like <laughs> the like um, karaoke microphone. Like this is like oh, the I see. main line okay, entry. Yeah. It's like a pretty sure, yeah. microphone. So people know Do it. Do call your girlfriend. <laughs> let's what? let's put it on. Yeah. I don't understand. Oh, that's just a karaoke. Is this song you do at karaoke? Oh, okay. I thought we were doing karaoke songs. No. All right. Uh, hopefully you're doing I'm gonna well. head out. It's it's been a couple weeks. Uh, I think Netrunner is a really interesting spot right now. People are kind of out there figuring it out. Mm -hmm. Obviously, standard meta shakeup. We've been playing a bit more standard on the channel. We have a video next week that's standard only, and it's better than this week's uh, because I think we did something that was more interesting. We did some testing. So I don't know if you watched the video, but basically the idea was like, okay, we can play regular Anarch and standard. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't play endurance anymore. <laughs> so what do we do with ten influence, let alone a console slot? Hmm. And so I decided to like try playing K two CP turbine mm -hmm. and Begalter. Yeah, you've got all the fixed strength breakers. Yeah, and see what and it's, goes. it's okay. Okay, but I'm actually really happy to say like, if Netrunner is in a point where that is the best thing you can do with your influence, that's probably not a good Netrunner, right? Mm. Like whenever Netrunner is like, can you break the most dice the cheapest? It's usually a less interesting game as much as again Monkey's mm -hmm. Paw and all that. Yeah. Um I'm glad to say that like you could do something more interesting and have more fun, <laughs> which is great. It's literally the most iconic mic in the world. It literally is, yeah. It is the mic emoji in most places. Hopefully, y'all are doing well. I'd be very interested to hear all about your, so far, your impact or your uh, experience playing Standard. Have you been playing Standard with the band list so far? Uh, no, I haven't. I When I've played, I've played mostly Startup these days. Oh, I, no, sorry. I did play start, uh, Standard on our Monday night meetup. Yeah? Uh, did I you didn't, build your decks or you borrowed someone? I did build some decks. I didn't build interesting decks because I haven't been in like... That's a choice. I've, I've been tired lately. You like, can do that. You can build boring decks. I do. Fine. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I mean, like, they were, you know, functional enough. And then I went up against the... Uh... No, no. All right. Mm-hmm. It's really one of the mics of all the time. I'm a fan. It's like good. So yeah. the issue is, this is going to be boring, is that this is routed into uh, an audio interface, except it's routed in the way that I won't want it to be routed in. So it's using the same like filters and processing that microphone's going through, which is inappropriate, um, largely. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand how a lot of audio interfacing works. And it seems like the jack on the back requires something else than what I have. So it's not good i could have been talking about books this whole time yeah i know okay yeah we'll get there it's borehole metal <laughs> he does them how's it going it's borehole meta oh, meta <laughs> no oh man yeah honestly i think it honest kind of is mm -hmm. uh it's really funny so i wanted to shout this out for sure if you haven't watched this or listened to this mm -hmm. um you might have missed there was like a, a small window there where you could have listened to one person's conversation with themselves this is a really cool video it is uh this is yasangrin with um a white blade eric you might know and when this was first uploaded it was didn't have jeff's audio which was really <laughs> funny so it's just like uh -huh. eric talking to himself and it was actually a pretty funny listen but now it's been fixed which is great oh dang and it's a really good conversation. And Eric is kind of in on Big Mavirus or mm -hmm. Big Half Run, as I'd call it, mm -hmm. which is the sort of thing we did a deck dive on a couple of weeks ago saying like, hey, if you play op with three Mavirus, you can pull Half Run at instant speed. Yeah. And that's really good because like 
it's good with program <clears throat> destruction, but I think it's even okay on its own because you can just pull half runs and hit end the runs on like Enigma. It's like, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But the idea is, and you saw this a bit yesterday if you watched the stream, um, it's like just fast advance, just like bad pub fast advance. I think the bad pub fast advance package is like actually like relatively good. And whether you're playing borehole or not, there's a lot of people playing outfit right now. Hmm. Cool. So I, I wait, but they aren't playing borehole. They can't some of them be. can be. Why not? Really? Okay, cool. So like, I, I guess I. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, mean, I, I borehole never seemed like a like an actual win condition. Surely the six turns that it stays up are no. six turns that the runner is going to just win the game exactly before it runs out so it's more like a speed run you really want to speed run your way to bad publicity mm -hmm. so this is something we mentioned a bit yesterday but like the big thing is what is <clears throat> i never know the name for this because it's one of those like really kind of technical names um and netrunner cards that always kind of elude me mm -hmm. but regulatory capture is a six two is unplayably bad um but a mm -hmm. two two is really good yeah so just getting to four bad pub as fast as you can is mm -hmm. kind of the most important thing yeah true and of course the big change in the meta now that people are not playing endurance because they can't is like ice, like uh, what's it called? Uh, trebuchet, he mm. types with one hand, yeah, and even bull scarier are really hard to deal with. Yeah. It's like you have to boomerang this, or you're not, it's not easy to deal with this that early on. Like, mm -hmm. anarchs don't want to break this with MK Ultra, boomerang is the common way to deal with it. Getting your Begalter down and still breaking this is a bit expensive, and maybe the bad pub will help, but like. That outfit deck got a lot easier to play, um, and it's a sort of deck that I think a lot of people wanted mm. to like as mm -hmm. much as like endurance kind of helped a lot. So, we'll see how it goes. How dare you talk to you on that way? <laughs> Yo, Mark Andre, how's it going? Hey, Mark Andre, good to see you. If you need something that rejects a lot of off-focus audio, hard to beat at that price. I have too. Processing audio inappropriately is the only way to do it, <laughs> as far as I know. Mm -hmm. I like. I'm totally over my head, and I always I'm just looking around for some YouTube video where someone can, with just a modicum of confidence, uh, say like, "Oh, this is a good way to process your 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 sure through the you know OBS," and mm -hmm. I'll just kind of do whatever they say. Sanger says, it was probably pretty listenable because I was very much a follower on that video. You know what I think <laughs> you should do? Get the original version of that video, splice yourself in, just having a completely different conversation with Eric. Whoa. I honestly think that would be really funny. <laughs> yeah. That would be really, really funny. I uh, I think <clears throat> I might be able to do that. My comments about the version where I wasn't audible. Uh, it's a really good piece. I, I like it a fair bit. Um, we're going to talk about some of the takes from that video. And I think a big part of it starting is like... Mm -hmm. I don't know. As much as like we can't make Eric a barometer of standard uh, inherently, <laughs> mm -hmm. Eric has some like, really strong stuff to say about Jinteki. And he's kind of mimicking something that I was saying last week on stream, which is like, it's really hard <clears throat> right now to play against Jinteki. Hmm. When I'm on JNet casual and I, I run into a Jinteki deck, especially like personal evolution, it's really difficult to figure out what they're doing to you. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different ways they can attack you. And they're actually like kind of different. Yeah. Like there's some fast advanced stuff. There's the acid based deck. There's the um like the Regenesis type score out stuff. Mm -hmm. Then there's this like kind of pseudo grinder glacier. This is like basically Bridgman's list from Worlds last year, I mm -hmm. think. Um, and like nobody can deal with three Anansis very easily in the meta. It's just like really, really hard. And the amount of like <clears throat> effort you need, it's generally like a couple turns before you figure out what you're playing into, and then you kind of have to pivot really. It's mm -hmm. like there's so much going on right now in Jinteki that is immensely stressful and difficult to play into, and it is more than I want to do a lot of times. <laughs> and it's it's kind of yeah, I I think that the inclusion of news team here is really indicative. Like, yeah, they have yeah. things to do with the tags, but mostly it's just make them steal more agendas than they feel comfortable with, and then stock buyback for uh for the all the money you need. This is weird too, right? Like mm -hmm. cards like News Team have been around forever, and you didn't often see them in like Jinteki decks. Mm -hmm. You could sell you zero pointers, which is deck is running, and of course in PE it's just net damage. Like mm -hmm. whatever, you don't care. But the big thing is we're seeing now News Teams more often than not, and we're seeing in other lists too, um, Nightmare Archives, which is super uh -huh. important. But like mm -hmm. stock buyback to me is like getting onto the edge of being such a frustrating kind of like mass commercialization. <laughs> yeah, yeah, card. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. econ you can't interact with. Right. You just can't interact with it. Like, there's no format <clears throat> agendas mm -hmm. in the standard format. I don't know if you need it. But you know what I would do to make this deck more Patrick-like? Yeah. We're already running 11 centuries. I say make it 12 centuries. Toss an archer in there. Oh. Drop one stock buyback, add an archer. You know what? Actually, if you had influence, which was always a fun card in these sort of lists. What's that? Tithonium? You know, have I, you I ever mean, played this? I mean, I, I've, I've played Tithonium. I can't remember. I, I always forget which one's Bulwark, which one's Tithonium. So this one's really sick. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. Like, That's these great. are good subroutines. Trash One Resource actually was like a very valuable subroutine yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're playing Jinteki Traps. But you res this for free sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that is yeah, kind if, of if you've block got, wild. If you've got two zeros and, and three ones. Yeah, you, also, you don't right? care. Well, especially mm -hmm. if you're trying to kill. I don't think it makes sense for this deck, but like... This deck is just so much ice. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually a slightly different than Bridgman's List. I think Bridgman's List was running like three Hokusai and just mm -hmm. be making inevitable damage happen as much as this deck has mm -hmm. snares and anemones. But like 
Man, Jiteki right now is really, really difficult. A hybrid release and Regenesis might, must be doing a lot of work in here because you don't want to run archives if you're afraid of nightmare archives, news teams, stuff like that, right? Yeah, it's tricky. But even then, like, if there's a sting in there mm. and then, like, a Kusanagi, mm. you suddenly take three damage out of nowhere. And then that opens up windows for them yep. to do, like, we're not on Blood in the Water. And, like, that's, hmm. these are the big things now. It's, like, not consistent across mm. all Jinteki lists across Standard. How many are running Snare? How mm. many are running How Many Blood in the Waters? Nobody's running Ronin anymore. Do you know <laughs> that? Do you not know that? Mm. Which ones are playing Moonpool with fast advance and mm. kill? Which ones now have, um uh, what's it called, Reaper function? Mm -hmm. Like, it's really difficult to get a read uh, until, like, you know, maybe a third of the game in. At that point, it maybe is too late. Mm-hmm. Hold on, let me catch up. Hey, come on. If you're playing the deck list of the week, I feel bad for your opponent. The deck looks <laughs> rough. I do not enjoy playing against this deck at all. Uh, Jeff is saying it's not the worst thing if you're playing like criminal because I do think, and you're seeing a bit of that splash around. If you have something, admittedly, like Begalter mm -hmm. deals with one Anansi well, but Begalter does kind of there's fall 11 centuries. <laughs> there's 11 centuries. That's centuries. when Begalter is no longer getting the value. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds pretty bang on. Audio is a pain. I ended up getting a mixer and interface to make a pretty physical process. It kind of helped. I wish I had like the space for like a, a simple like Yamaha board um, just because the dials are kind of mm. physically fun. Feel a little bad, but I got someone by my <laughs> testing out an orbital superiority turn one and waiting until they floated the tag to do five damage unexpectedly. That's, That's buck wild. Funny. That's great. That's really cool. <laughs> you should never feel bad when you get a space laser kill. It's tough. Yeah, mm. that doesn't happen that often it happens in startup a fair bit it's the sort of card that you also like kind of dismiss so you don't mm -hmm. play around it patrick you ready also, as ready as i'll ever be shout out to jinsei's baltic nationals i'm gonna expose my my ignorance a bit i'm not exactly sure where this happened you mean like what baltic country or where the baltic oh okay just get me out of this without making me seem ignorant, please. Uh, oh, well, everybody, how's everyone doing today? Uh, it's it's the 9th of March, and we, we love all the Baltic countries. We've got the ones that are in the middle there. Um, we, we love them, you know. Oh, well, this is not right. Kind of, you know, near Slovenia, right? Yeah. Probably Slovenia shares a border with at least one I mean, Baltic. I would call them Mediterranean at that point. Well, well no, because they're not. The Baltic countries mostly don't have any any ports on the Mediterranean, right? Macedonia. Alex the Great. Al Alex the Great. <laughs> you know, Alex the Great, as as his friends call him. Yeah, he's from he's from there. Oh, <laughs> where's the eject button from this topic? Thank you, River. Uh, yeah, no, I, I guess I could talk about books. I did threaten that earlier. I haven't even been reading much these days. All right. Behringer mm -hmm. in the X-Link line had a more reasonable size sound mixer. I was looking at there was a like the Yamaha, I think it's the MG10, something like mm -hmm. that. And then there's a Behringer <clears throat> that was about that intro point that was also really good. Slovenia, so... Macedonia, share no borders <laughs> with the Baltics. All right. Well, this isn't a geography cast. And like in the in the future of Netrunner, they do. So actually, you know, who's ignorant now? Yeah, extern. I find virtual cables to be hard to learn, easy to get messed up. We've been running on virtual cables for a long time, and if you can get your head around it, um, it is massively like super, uh, super, super impactful. Like the amount of folks that unfortunately like <laughs> try to get audio in their stream and then it loops or like mm -hmm. it's it's so easy for that to be bad, and then like having mastery over it kind of opens up everything. So unrelated, but we held a Highlander tournament last weekend, and it was interesting to see that Nova on pair decks that people came up with. It was like forced. Like, it wasn't Highlander constructed. It was, well, sorry, it was like Empire and Nova tournaments, right? Honestly, the Empire decks were more varied than Nova ones. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I think so. Because Nova, you can just put the best runner, like, breakers and stuff in there. Yes. And Ampere your Wincon is, is, like, just generic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just do well. Um, yeah, I, I've heard that in like Nova versus Ampere, like specifically Nova versus Ampere metas that actually Ampere is more favored than in any meta largely hmm. because the Ampere deck can actually challenge you in different ways, mm -hmm. right? Like you can make a tag Ampere and Nova inherently is inconsistent specifically for certain tech pieces. So mm -hmm. I believe it. Voice meter for virtual cables life. Yeah. Yeah. We you know, I'm on banana right now and three virtual cables. Power guys, do guess a stream when I'm really bad at geo? We could try that though. That'd be fun. I think I'm okay at geo guesser. I have been training this year Let's do it. that I can name most of the countries on a map. That's what I've been getting down to. Okay. So I can do like almost all of them. There was that. Uh... Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, there, Like there was in the, in the Wordle wave, uh, there was one that was like, here's a rough shape, shape. of a region, yeah, yeah. not necessarily a country, but maybe a province or something. And you have to figure out what, which, what it was. And it just like told you like, hey, you're off by a thousand kilometers in this direction. 
Uh, okay, what do we think about this? It's okay. I wouldn't start with this. I'd rather have some econ that's usable right off the bat. So not a lot of that in this deck. Fair. Like we didn't talk much about the deck. Like economy, mm. there's no regolith. Like all it is is hedge right. fund stock buyback. Click and hedge and, and, and Rashida, yeah. All right. Well, in that case, uh, so maybe just put out the house of knives with the, an enemy in front and like. I don't even think you ice this. Like you could, you probably <clears> should. <throat> mm -hmm. But I think so against Essa, like you need to protect both main mm -hmm. centrals because it's either finality, which is a bit risky. Core damage is inherently risky in Tinchin mm -hmm. or uh, Chestushka, which turn one Chestushka, even if you go down to two credits, it's rough. Now, the cool thing is that if they sabotage late on our turn, we're then allowed to do hybrid release. Mm -hmm. We can do Regenesis. Yep. Like it actually powers us up. Yeah, yeah sabotage is interesting in yeah. Tinchin Or like days. you just throw like stings in there, mm -hmm. like or Kusanagi. So it's not All right, the worst. So, so, so we'll keep this. Yeah, we'll keep this. Okay. We'll keep this and we're just going to throw out House of Knives. Open up Torby and guess which one's higher. <laughs> um, I play a lot of guess the game, which is like, um, you know, a game where they show you screenshots mm -hmm. increasingly difficult of of video games and you have to guess them. And I'm I have such a good success rate. And then also Chrono Photo is really oh, I good. I haven't done the uh, like the screen grab guessers in a while. So Chrono Photo is really good. It's just like guess when the date of this photo is by year mm -hmm. off of like 100 years. Uh, so I do want to defend HQ, maybe an enemy because that'll actually hit something. Yeah, I think that's fine. You generally, like, you are going to try and score on this deck, so keeping an enemy for the remote server is reasonable. Here, we probably just need to get something taxing on R&D. A lot of the ESA decks are not running Hippo, so, like, you can get away with, like, just having a DNA tracker or a non -C. All right, I'll put this over R&D. I don't know what S's Breaker Suite is. If it's been Breaker, so be it. Icing up Archives is also, like, totally reasonable. Mm. Personal Evolution, what is this villainy? Yo, Solomir, how's it going? I want to try your deck really bad, um, but Deckless of the Week kind of makes us do these sort of things. And I, again, I'm kind of on with Eric. I think Chinteki is probably really good right now, and we're just hoping that nobody embraces that fact. Mm -hmm. Because it's kind of really difficult <clears throat> to play into sometimes. Yo, Frisbee, we did that one at work on Fridays, Wordle, and then Wordle, super hard. <laughs> How funny you get random Pacific Island, though. The Pacific Islands are the hardest ones, and even like... Um, uh, like Atlantic islands, like the sort of Caribbean type islands. Mm -hmm. Those are very, very difficult. What's this run for time bomb? Time bomb. Okay. All right. Okay. Fine. All right. Uh, I don't know. Just try to announce it. It's going to be expensive. Uh, we just ice up everything and they'll struggle to interact. Throw out a buyback. It doesn't do anything. Sure. And then one from our Yolo one, maybe. That's fine. That's fine, actually. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay with that. So they have big hand size. But well, we can't score out. I don't know if we need to score out. Retribution, if we ever tag them, which would be news team, they have to do it to themselves. Yeah, Mara. Absolutely. Like 100%. Nice. That's the most satisfying retribution target. It. Yeah. Uh, I kind of want to score out, though. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be financially ruined, but I feel like most of this deck is clean for credits. We might as well do something. They only have two cards in hand. They can't really run with this. This doesn't add damage. We haven't seen steel skins. Oh, right. And they have Marrow. So, uh... Just give them retribution. It's not going to matter. Sure. Cool. Done a lot. Oh, it's Wordle. 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 Excuse me. World -ol. If you want to jam my Thule deck, I leave it to your discretion if you want to keep the 3x Hangeki. Yo, Joe, the 3x Hangeki is like the reason I want to play it. So you got to kind of embrace mm. that part. We can do a box office game one of these days too. I'm good at that one. That's movie? Stuff? Yeah, it's like here's a weekend. Guess the top five movies of oh, that weekend. And, it, and like you you can like buy hints by like losing points okay. in the in your overall score. I I That one's actually quite satisfying. All right, so uh, we know yeah, we're on two credits. There's no punish here. We can't fire Snare, and staying above Snare is like the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, they lost the time bomb. We could have considered hitting there, but it only really matters that we mm -hmm. house knives them if we're threatening Snare or something. Uh, this so, is totally fine. Yeah. Uh, maybe you house the knives here. Because they're oh, not playing yeah, around blood I, in the I, water. I, I, right? It totally should be, though. Like, they're not at all playing around blood in the water mm -hmm. here. Just, mm -hmm. Like, we don't have plays here. Just, you know. Draw. No, just click three, man. We just have to get our ice rest, and then they don't have a game. Right. Yeah. Drawing up a bit is actually not bad. Um, yeah. Because yeah, we're huh. going to get sabotaged mm -hmm. in a turn. Mm -hmm. That's true. But like, it's hard for them to check archives if there's like three agendas in there and Kusanagi's like, they just take four net damage. Mm -hmm. It's really, really difficult. Okay. So, Mero, only on score. Mm -hmm. Very so, important. I just won't score. <laughs> you can't score. So, here, hit, hit them with the House of Knives. Oh, that's uh, too late. Shit. Yeah. You're right. Because then, like, they can't, well, they can't steal Obakata for what it's worth because they have to take the PE damage. Mm -hmm. They stole Kusanagi, so sick. One steel skin down, and now the buybacks are getting better and better. And maybe mm -hmm. we should have kept those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's only a There's matter three of time. Them, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but yeah, just doing damage to them is important. Uh, no, not exactly, but close. So this person has their their um, they're on the meta, which mm. surprises me if they don't 
like a lot of times you can read the deck list of the week if you mm-hmm. see like generally it's pretty popular around the week but they did know the deck which is really cool yo james just found out fmg released free official arkham pmps during the pandemic yeah um some of them are really good so we got a paperclip in the bin mm. we have no reason to do the damage here okay yeah we'll wait until it's, it's gonna be more yeah, until it actually matters i boy the next time we order from the games enter mm-hmm. i do want to get in on that because i wasn't able to get in on it last time when you when you guys oh had. people are gonna want it there's a bunch of people that missed it All so right. here we have the sabotage three next turn so i do think you just put anemone on archives right because then it's so hard for them to check archives fair. and then like what are we sabotaging maybe three just from the deck. i'd like to draw first okay yeah that's totally fair interesting that wins games of the day like that would have won a game not always but mm-hmm. they, they're face checking when we have five mm-hmm I'm gonna put this on archives. Yeah, so I'm gonna take credit. We're gonna have to time bomb here. So we just need money though, that's for sure. But we're now gonna have to sabotage three. Definitely gonna lose one in Ansi because we won't have the money. Yeah, I think that's fair. You can probably get rid of the Sysantan too. Like just make it snare the only card in hand. And keep it in Ansi too. Yeah. The problem is like our recursion is gonna be stretched mm-hmm. pretty thin. That's super safe. That's fine, actually. That's yeah, super that's safe. that's pretty good. Hey Piotr, good evening. How's it going? Again, so their hit points are super important. Mm-hmm. Um, mind you, they have all this money in the fermenter, and it's not really worth purging. It actually might not be the worst because we don't really have a proactive game plan. Yeah, that's true. Purging might be fine. Yeah, purging might be okay because that's all their money. Mm-hmm. And if they are on one credit, they can't play liberated. Maybe they can play uh, raindrops cut stone, but that's a lot. That's of an interesting thing to do against Kentucky when most of our subroutines are do net damage anyway. All right, uh, yeah. uh, come on in. You could consider net damaging there, but it's probably fine. Because here they can steal Obokata. If they steal Obokata here, they definitely take it. And mm-hmm. then the game is actually, like, not great for us. Mm-hmm. But there's only two and 35. <laughs> Time bomb. Nice. <laughs> but that's good. Like, they're just doing our plan back to us. Mm-hmm. Which is just hit points. Luckily, yep. that's the last Time Bomb. Uh, okay. Take uh, it good. I want to draw. Oh, okay. Now we can't purge. Right. Eh. Um. I think we just take two. Like, now they have to respect the Nancy. As soon as we're on eight. Can you check their heap to see what breakers they have? Just the okay, paper so they right can't now. run anymore. They're mm-hmm. just risking a Nancy. And merely we go down to zero, which is obviously kind of bad. Yeah, maybe we should have kept a stock buy back in our hand. Hmm. Uh-oh. Oh, that's great. This is actually fine. Yeah, that's fine. Because we're also, we're also going to do that, right? Uh, You don't have to do it until after the, the, the ice fires. Fair enough. Because they might jack out. Well, no, they shouldn't jack out. Because this is not an access. So this is... Can you hover the ice? Because people might not be familiar. Going to lose a lot of money. Going to... Yeah. This, when it came out, was one of the wildest pieces of ice. Yeah, it's like, oh man, finally a huge code gate. Yeah. Um, okay, what what do they lose? So we we hit another one of these. Uh, ye- okay, so that they've now got the full suite of uh, yeah, of they have all the breakers, but like none of this ice is easy to break. I'm gonna hit them with one of these. There's no reason to. Okay. Because this is not an access, right? It's a stargate, so it's not like they can. True. Die. Yeah. So yeah. So they're gonna get rid of a spin doctor, which means we draw a hybrid release or, or a house of knives. Mm. And if they get rid of the spin doctor, it's gonna be trashed face up. And a really important thing is like hybrid release. Immediately, we don't have the credits. Actually, mm. saves this. We can pull mm. out an agenda. Mm. I think. What's the text on hybrid release? Install one yeah, face down face card. Down. That's pretty so they good. Trash yep. the spin doctor. Okay, that's fine. Yep. All right. So we've drawn the hybrid release. They know we, that. We don't have money for it though, so we should make some money. Just click three. We just have to always threaten snare. Yep. Well, I'm sharing brain cells with Pat today. I always forget the purge line, <laughs> even when I remind myself during the runner's turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, we're getting time bomb next turn. That's fine. We have a Kusanagi. We can th- Tithe is even really good when they break it for three. Mm-hmm. But uh, raindrops going to go HQ. So, that is not often worth resing. Huh. Yeah. It's not because if you res it, they draw cards. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe getting through the deck is important, but the enemy is so relevant here. If they hit the snare, it's the worst case. Kusanagi's fine. Ice is fine. Mm-hmm. They know we have one agenda in here. P lost fine. some kind of bait. No, this is um, <laughs> Deckless of the Week. Kill, we can't really afford to. Kill, kill, kill. We love killing here on the Metropole Grid. Wait, how many cards do they have in it? They have three? We could have done four. No, but they had MK Ultra. Actually, do we have lethal? Yeah, we had the kill, kill there. We had four damage. But they ran with four, didn't they? What are wait, they running wait, with? We four? just win right now. You just res. And then and the House of Knives, we win. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, because well, no, but they do have up oh, with they don't have any money. Yeah. yeah, now we win. We we probably would have won before. Just throw out anything, it doesn't matter. We win. And then uh Yeah, hit that on our approach. Oh yeah, we'll fire unbroken. You have to do that first though. Yeah. And there's the game. Yeah, good game. Yeah, so it's hard. Um they have to get their axes in <clears> if they can. <throat> Stealing an Obakata is important. The, yeah, unless they have steel skin, but they'd already gone through two of them and with a lot of deck left, yes. like you know, pretty unlikely they'd have it. Punted slightly, sorry. Uh, 
So like they took some pretty risky lines. We yes. did not have snare money there, but like obviously we kind of missed it. An enemy could have been lethal there. Mm -hmm. They had a couple runs where like Sisenton was like not exactly lethal, but because mm. they were dangerous. running with a steel skin, it would attack. be dangerous. But for them, like it's really hard for them to get a DNA tracker. Like as much as Stargate is scary when you're playing a trap deck, you just put an Anansi in front of there, and like how can mm -hmm. they can make maybe one more run a turn? Not that like Essa has good uh, pressure. Mm -hmm. It's hard to take more core damage. It's not impossible. So like Chestushka is actually their best line for the next mm -hmm. couple turns, and for just sure. like grinding us. But yep. then checking archives becomes near impossible. <laughs> where like running archives already was going to be two damage. We mm -hmm. would have fed another one three damage, and like we don't blend the water though, so like it's still a bit of work. Mm. Yeah. All right, we're doing another one. Sorry. Uh, okay. All right. It's fine, man. It's fine. <laughs> Obviously, money is really hard. And, yep. like, I do think this deck, a lot of times, is just, like, click three or click two, install an ice. Mm -hmm. And you probably can and should build a remote server. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this deck wants to do it less than the Bridgman version, which had upgrades to, like, back it up. Yes, yeah, true. Hokusai and... I think we have to build a remote server. We have Rashida. Like, we have Labyrus, to. Labyrinth, yeah. All right. But, like, it's hard to tell what deck can deal with all these sentries really cheaply. Mm -hmm. Or, like, as good as possible. Because the best killers are, like, what? Revolver gets taxed out. Yeah. Nancy does it. Ooh, Jeff's. Uh oh Nice. I like use with Nuka with Essa for massive media draw. Yo, Diogen, I think Nuka is, like, my favorite card in Essa in hmm. startup or outside of startup. Just because having burst draw on the table so you can take damage from hand and still draw up is super, super important. That I do think Nuka is so good. This seems like a fine hand. Yeah, and Jeff <clears> is going to try and, like, uh, skill check us here because he claimed that 409 is good into this. I believe it. Mm -hmm. um, we have to not get diversioned. Our money's really bad. Mm -hmm. So, like, icing up centrals are really important. I don't know. There's no, like, D res. DNA on HQ is probably fine. I'm just gonna move my camera. Alright. Okay. 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 So we're keeping. Yeah. This thing is good. Ysangrin keeping. The sting is a sort of agenda, like if they steal, you're totally happy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I just put them on the table, let him get see, get the expose, right? Yeah. So like <clears throat> tech slots are gonna be really interesting because mm -hmm. 419 decks going into the standard ban list, yeah, they basically just got a bunch of free slots open. Mm -hmm. I, I don't no, you just don't get diversioned. That's our goal: is don't get diversion for first two turns. You put that on the table, they diversion us. Okay, so and no, also no, you, have okay, around, you have to play around four one nine too. Yeah, I know. So I'm putting this on the table. Let this eat the four one nine. So you're gonna show them that? Yeah. Why? Let him steal it. He's gonna steal it anyway. And it's a, it's an agenda that we'd rather he have more of. Not always. All right. So we're gonna pay into the four one nine ability. We're, okay, we're starting with head fund. Yeah, hundred percent. So we need to get something meaningful in HQ so we don't get battered in. Yeah, it'll be DNA tracker. But we don't sure. want him to see this DNA so tracker. So you put the Tithe on R&D and this on HQ. And we let him see that it's Tithe. Yeah, it's Tithe. Like, immediately Tithe is not the best in typical alter, but mm -hmm. once you have two Tithes, we're talking. And you just protect HQ with the best you have. He might just send it HQ because, like, making you spend eight on a Nazi is good <clears> enough. <throat> mm -hmm. Here, do you want to zoom in mouse wheel just, like, one or two clicks? Uh, Zoom. Good. Hey, dear. Good. And we could do Spin Doctor first. Spin Doctor actually would eat one too many on Zoom. Okay, so we're Are going we both hitting control there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. I think this has to be a check for um, is it for what's it called for the worm or is this a mutual out of? Yeah, an Amakua. Mm. That doesn't make that's weird. You didn't have to make that run. Like it still costs you two clicks. All right. Well, now tithe is well tithe will eat one of no, the fine, ultra uses. Fine. That's fine. Okay, so now we probably do spin doctor, and you can just let that get exposed. Yep. Uh, nope. Just res it mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and see what we get. Okay. So against, he didn't go for Amakua. He went mm -hmm. for this thing. Mm -hmm. So the question is how much money, he needs burst money, right? Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard on one credit. So like making sure Dirty Laundry doesn't go off is kind of nice. I don't so think he's Putting this over guard. archives. Putting on archives is like fine. Yeah. Putting for credits, fine. Uh, Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah. Archives, credit, go. Could have got HHN. Yeah, no, it's mm -hmm. like really easy to try and want a new mutual favor. <clears throat> mm -hmm. A lot of your lists will have a way around it, but. All right. He's also clicking for credits and slamming then one of those. Start turn. All right. Um, we have no interest to score at anything besides yep. maybe the hybrid release. Yeah, but the hybrid release doesn't get us anything right now. Exactly. So, so we need to set it up. Draw. What else is our turn? Are we scoring out a one two? No. Yeah, we can draw once. We have spin doctor two, so we can always discard a card. Mm. Those are fine. Yeah, I mean, kind of like having them around anyway. Yeah. Uh, you can keep drawing up maybe, uh, and then we have to uh, double ice something. Well, no, we want to do two installs if we want to do install. Mm -hmm. So you can always like install an R and D protect and then just put a Kusanagi naked. Maybe that seems kind of rough. I don't actually know how you bait people into Kusanagi. I think for centrals. 
Hey, Dustite, how's it going? Um, mm. An email address is usually the best. I don't respond very quickly because I don't check it that often, but it would be metropolgrid at, G at G uh, and we, But G we also want to build up a server. Not anytime soon. All right, so this on R&D and just yeah. let him see it? Uh, no, I'd protect it because then he has to play around it being a DNA or a Nancy. All right. Just take a credit. It's like really slow, but so is this mm -hmm. deck. Yeah, double tithe R&D is, is the way to play around Bugalter because Bugalter, if you want to highlight it, mm -hmm. Pat, yeah. gives you credits back the first time you break a century. Yeah, so. it's very efficient for the first one, and then after that, it's kind of normal. Let him have it. Uh, Sure, yeah. Yeah. Joke's on you. It's not even normal. It's worse than normal. Mm. One strength is not good. It, that's fair, yeah. Yeah. It's like, compare that to an anotech. Okay, that's mm. something we want to get out. Yeah, we kind of wish we had dice. Um... So here we could do triple install. He'd probably check all of them. So we could do like Kusanagi, Kusanagi, Rashida, mm -hmm. and just pay. Pay for all. Pay for the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And not Sting. You don't want to put Sting out there. You could. Yeah. Sure. All right. Put I'm, two good one out. I'm gonna put that. Pay one. Yeah. So our cards are getting checked. Like we're one boomerang diversion away from the game being like totally different. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this goes. Um, Rashida's a bit dodgy too because if it goes off, we can't score the thing on the table. But I don't mm -hmm. think we're in any rush. Class act is nice. It means that. He can run. You want to highlight class act real quick? Okay. What's the middle one? That's middle the middle one is a sting. Fine. Yeah, he only has so many hit points, like most runners, and we got a dirty laundry and a diversion out. That's nice. Oh yeah. That's, that's good. good. That's new. That's nice. I like to see that. Here, I'm gonna just move this. It's okay. hard when we have the wide camera because it's there's so much we're dodging around. And then here we're too small. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna <laughs> slightly overlap the card art. Okay. And okay, so we're gonna get the Rashida. I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Fire the Rashida. Mm. Okay. Get to do that. So I think we will have it opposite. We want to score the first stings because I think it's easier for us to score an early sting and hard for And then let him steal yes. it to get the damage. Because we're not good at scoring the later the game goes. Mm -hmm. Um well we got this. <laughs> we want that. Yeah, we don't really want it. No. It's gonna wait there for a while. So here's where we have to build like an Obakata anemone mm -hmm. server. Yeah. So I think we build a server. I do think we just do anemone and then we put like a Kusanagi behind it. And then we get two installs a turn. You play Hedgehog first. Well, uh, order doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway. I New remote. Breath okay. of the Wild, so now I'm here. That's awesome. Can hide it. Uh, Kusanagi behind yeah, it? Or sure. do we do we want to actually go for House of Knives here? I kind of uh, I kind of want to actually go for something useful. He knows. So next turn, he'll be on two credits. If he cracks different entries on 14, he knows we're all sentries, so he'll probably check the remotes over here. And he has eight cards in hand. Like, it's not a good turn yeah, to that's push true. out. Yeah, so okay. I do think you put the Kusanagi or you nothing. But Kusanagi's fine. Mm -hmm. But like this is the one turn where like he has a huge amount of money and a huge amount of hands, so he either has to play all his cards or get them used. Oh, FAO, that's sick. Oh, okay. So uh, what is that? That's a DNA. I guess we're res it. That's, yeah, I guess we're great. I guess we're resing it. <laughs> nice. Yep. Fair. All right. That's eight credits down. Another forged. <laughs> what is that? Server five. So uh, well, no, no, not gonna no, res we, that. We that's that's we, bad if to res it. We don't. We just recur that. And now it's actually something we can bring back with hybrid. Exactly. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Well. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, just install yeah, yeah. face down, of course. Yeah, yeah, that's really funny. Mm -hmm. Come on, I wonder if this is the, the SCBI deck that has no win condition. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine by me. Steal it. We've got stock buyback. Took a mad dash and out. lost the mad dash. It's like a hard card to play, but mm -hmm. yeah, we like it. I told myself I was going to replay it before Tears of the Kingdom, but I'm not sure that's mm -hmm. happening. I still haven't beaten Breath of the Wild. I think I still have the camel to do. I always get like deep into it, and then I kind of forget. And then it's like you pick it up a month later, you have. Yeah. Can't tell what's going on. You know what happens to me? I keep forgetting the controls and like yes. half of my time is spent whistling for my horse. <laughs> Just like, oh, I, I'm going to try to ma magnesis that thing. Whistle for my horse. Okay. Hands getting a bit ugly. We can but, score our Genesis out here and then we'll get back the ice on the table. Not that we need it. So I don't think we're in a rush. Uh, you, you mean the hybrid? Sorry, the hybrid. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to do that. I don't know if we're in a rush to do that. Because then our economy is low, and then we can run R&D. No, we've got the stock buyback. I think buyback. we just click three. Like, I don't think we're in a rush to do I don't, anything. I don't want to stock buyback. No, just click three. No, and sorry. I mean, I, I don't want to not do anything. I want to get a Dude, hyper Dude, tech. You grind through. You don't do anything half the time. Like, he has to draw through his deck. We literally have net damage. Sorry if that's terrible audio for everyone. The beasts are optional. Hey, what's the best way to engage with the outside of live streams? Trust me, don't. <laughs> not worth. <laughs> oh, look at us. We're clicking for three. I just don't, so like so much of it is, is to make sure that we get diversion, we can threaten snare. Mm -hmm. Like that's so much of the game right now that melee we don't, like look at this, our stock buyback's even better. Yeah, well it was going to be better anyway. Stock back is only their agendas, not yeah, ours. Yeah, no I know, but he was probably going to steal an agenda anyway. I'm, I'm just saying like let's make some progress. I don't know, I don't think so. I'm with Patrick here, everything you need to do next turn you can do you. before credits. Well we're going to do it now, now. Uh, okay. Right, now send it. Yeah. 
your remote. Just let them see it. No. Yes. Yeah, we're going to score. Okay. Yeah, yeah don't, I mean, don't, don't pay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, take uh, that FAO. Uh, do the PE always first. Inside job, nice. So it's an unknown card into a new server. In theory, you could put that on HQ, but I think we need to make a remote server. Mm -hmm. And now if there's no mass draw, like we can always do double install, double advance <clears throat> with the oboe behind it. As mm -hmm. long as we don't get the version. Mm -hmm. So we need five plus two plus padding, which one stock buyback already is really good. Yeah, just one credit. It's easy. Yeah, yeah sure. Just, yeah, all of them. Jokes on you. All right. So this is the cheapest server that's possibly imaginable <laughs> in this deck. Uh-huh. Like no server is this cheap. It's personal evolution, not personal revolution. Play slow. <laughs> All right. It's two credits for an axis. This is pretty fair. We still threatening snare. Uh oh. Regenesis. Hit a dirty laundry. <laughs> Going on two agenda. Only points. on two. two yeah, points, now you so play that... stock buyback, and I would tilt so hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, do we want to wait until he's at five no. so he so he guarantees tilts or what? Uh, no, we have three of them. All right. Yeah. Play it. Yeah. Uh, it's terminal though, so you have to do it last. Right, it is terminal. Gotta yeah. remember that. Okay, so I'm gonna put the Brashida down and protect it. What are we drawing into? I don't know if we're right, yeah, not the Brashida. Uh, house of Knives and protect it. I think you do House of Knives and Server Seven. Uh, protect it, yeah. Credit buyback, or no, also Rashida. Hmm. New remote buyback. Yeah, this seems fine. Fifteen credits. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This sort of economy that like is technically uninteractable. Like you need to steal agendas, and it's like mm -hmm. so much of the economy mm -hmm. in Neverner is based <clears> on the <throat> idea that you can do something to prevent it, right? Like if they're threatened they can't you know play hedge fund or anything else and this one always gets me it's just like oh 314 whatever mm -hmm. Rashida goes down again maybe we threw that a bit but that's a click that he's not drawing all right you just do the damage here that's three more damage yeah oh we did discard a card that's ugly um well we'll find we'll we'll get something back uh there's two spin doctors you could maybe what's on the archives isn't our anemone if you're feeling brave man you can do that yeah, I'm always being brave. And that helps. We have no fast advance, but like a Regenesis will get there. Okay. Lost the second doof. There's only one more doof. So now we can take a couple more risky lines. And he has to keep his cards up. Because immediately now, if we install advance, advance, Obakata, it's mm -hmm. like a bit dodgy. Hmm. hmm. Just got to draw. Hmm. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah. Is it going to end up in archives, you think, or? Uh, we'll just keep, like, we just hold it. I'm just going to draw again. Yeah, yeah. I think we need that for r and I think the deck might be on a finality. Or unless, no, this is probably the CBI one, which has no multi-access. I'm going to take a credit, and next turn we'll do more, many installs. Okay. He has 24 cards up. Like, he has, he has been very, uh, like, not installing a lot. Now we see what he meant when saying that P does not make for great video interactions between the both of you is the best part of this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you see, this is our bad server, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But no, admittedly, like, just dying to snare and Jeff is going to play around it. So it's not like he's just going to, like, cheese it into an ice and then just die, it, which happens. Like, mm -hmm. you have to force that to happen. But, like, Jeff is not going to make uncontested uh, mistakes. But, like, a lot of times the best play is just, like, the inevitability. Oh, get credit. Nice. Thank you, Jeff. Right, like, like Jeff, the way that Jeff should be playing against this is also not very exciting. Hmm. Oh, sick. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't need that. So now we want to build a remote server. Yeah. And then we like jam uh, House of Knives now puts him on game point, which is scary. So like we mm -hmm. might have to jam like the news team or something. Jam the news team? Like, like I don't know. I, I'd rather. Mm. I think we draw once. Okay. You ice up server seven with that. Probably have to ice up R&D at some point. And then we just buy back. Oh, no. Ice up R&D. Yeah. Ice yeah, up yeah. R &D. We have to keep him at. Uh, the way that he gets through the uh, HQ ice is Amino, which is actually six credits. Like, that's mm -hmm. as much as we lose one, that's one of the best trades we can ask for. Mm -hmm. 22 cards left. We've got to keep interacting. Diogene has me self conscious that we've got to keep like, <laughs> providing good content okay, for the stream. Deuce is while exposing Anansi. So he has to make a run here. Um, there's no good server to run. So he's probably going to eat our Anemone, and then knowing what's in archives is going to be kind mm -hmm. of the problem. Uh, we probably should have gone out of the way to throw out the new steam because I don't think he's going to float the tags. Sure. So now we have to give him the anemone. Wait. Well, no, we can throw out the new steam. Yes. Yeah. But we have to res the anemone. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Which means that we can't, we can't res that, but that's fine. That's fine. Next turn we will. Okay. Still playing that. Purge Uh, soon? Yeah, maybe. Next turn we could. Yeah, I think <laughs> so. So now the order access is really important. He might not want access because he could die. Right? Like, yeah, he jacks out. We could have yeah. feed him a Smart. sting and he would have died. So he jacked mm -hmm. out there. But that means he's not getting a turtle counter. So like purging now actually is okay. Mm -hmm. The problem is like just the anemone on our, our archives is the weak part that he can get uh, turtle counters. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't know if you purge. I think you have to actually put a Nazi on archives and Ooh. then purge next turn. Ah, uh, probably just purge though. I don't know. It's really hard. We because, could like put, he has so much money. I mean, we could put Anansi here, then House of Knives, and then this. But so far, we're just trying to like. If he doesn't have money, he can't run consistently because he mm -hmm. can't pay five credits for a single ice with the economy engine he has. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. But okay. like purging is also reasonable. But then if we're doing that, we're not doing anything else. But we purge, we put him back. Like he needs to crack down the next turn because otherwise he has to play most of his cards to get economy, mm -hmm. and that puts him away from our win condition. All right, I'm gonna purge. Yeah, I think it's fine. It's like. Again, we're not a very quick mm -hmm. deck. Uh, we're not blocking ice on the server. Like that's all we've done mm -hmm. so far. But um, like we just have to kind of play a bit methodical as much as that is slow. You see, like he's yeah, gonna just, respect just, that. Uh, okay. 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 So we need to get a spin doctor or a regenesis in remote server. Mm -hmm. If he flips the Obakata regenesis is off. So here we could do like a double install into. Uh, so like we can put a Nancy in archives. We need to have a good ice on archives. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, okay. So now what we put in the remote server is interesting. House of Knives would be the best for us, or Rashida. I think House of Knives into, um, like, buyback will be our last click for sure. I, th I think House of Knives and then buyback. Okay. That's what I want to do here. Yeah, I think Rashida's the other option. This is totally fine. Again. Mm -hmm. In infinite cool. money. Cool. That's, cool, 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 cool. I mean, we can't raise all our non yes. unfortunately, but, uh, you know. We honestly, honestly kind of can. This is fine. This is totally fine. This is fine. like not gonna... great. This is mm -hmm. fine. Again, Rashida could have gone in here, and I think Jeff would have checked it. So like Jeff is mm -hmm. just checking everything, but that's five credits. Again, it's seven, but he gets back two. So now this is really two. So this is where like he only has so much money. I mm -hmm. think we should put Rashida here because he would run, and then next turn we put the House of Knives because mm -hmm. we now have a window, and House of Knives is such an important card because mm -hmm. Jeff's on game point. It's awesome we get to hear the back and forth between you guys actually showcase decision making really well. Hey, that's actually a really good point. That that's kind of what we want to do. That's yeah. that's that's actually been one of the purposes. And then we just ended up talking about goosebumps because you say something weird, and then uh, we have to like, go on a deep dive. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, we want to get a sting in there. He can't run this turn. He can't run this turn. Well, I mean, he's probably got some sort of. Maybe he has inside job, but inside job doesn't work on a Nancy, right? That's Can you highlight true. inside job? What does it say? Encounter or approach. So it'll fire. Yeah, he yes. can inside job on Nancy. Yeah, so he'll take damage but that doesn't mean he won't be able to steal a but he well doesn't he know what it is he doesn't know what it is so yeah. draw first because like what's the rest of our turn mm -hmm. that's eventually going to get there so i think you just install that click for credit again we spent a lot oh that's ugly yeah okay hmm. you can also talk more about the breath we of the could wild. talk more about breath of the wild um you hey see, this is i think the play that we should have done the turn before mm -hmm. is the rashida first but that's totally fine so we but now now we get to do this and it does a bunch of damage. damage yeah it's okay it's expensive like he's going to hit centrals now uh, order doesn't matter. Okay, bravado inside job, boomerang. Okay, it's okay. He has a paperclip. It doesn't matter in this matchup. There's mm -hmm. no barriers. Mm -hmm. And we just need to make sure we can always mm -hmm. may let Amakua not get away with the game. Yeah. So Tears of the Kingdom comes out in May. You know, I I haven't played Phantom Brigade, but it's looking good. People are saying it's like a what is that? It's it's like an XCOM but with like, oh, like the battle max yeah, Excel exactly. or whatever. People are saying it's like okay. Well, I've, okay. You're, you're saying that incident. like it's a bad thing. I am okay with XCOM that's actually Excel. Yeah. Anyway, I haven't tried it. <laughs> what else have I been playing lately? So you brought that up, that like Hi-Fi Rush game or whatever it's called? I did, yeah. And like, I have no doubt that there's money paid to make that on Xbox Game Pass, but like, I don't want to buy it because I know it's on Game Pass. Mm -hmm. And at some point I'll pay Game Pass for a month. Yeah, just just get Game Pass. I know. Me. Okay, but yeah. But like, no, but I it, can't believe they sell that game for fifty dollars on Steam. Considering fifty dollars, well, like 40 50, to 50. 50, fifty Canadian dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I like I listen to like uh, mm. give him the Nazi. You have to. Like, we'll yeah, yeah, I have to. You're right. Yep. Like obviously this is bad, but like mm -hmm. this is now very expensive. He'll give us two bucks back. Mm -hmm. We can't fire a snare, which is the worst part. He hasn't he's, seen he's, a single he's, snare. He's break, breaking both subs. Oh wow! And will he give us one credit? So if he hits an obakata, he wins. Yeah, he's keeping us. There's one in nineteen. If he trashes a snare, that's the worst. Um, no, nope, we're fine. Phantom Brigade looks great. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen enough of it. Yeah, High Fight Rush is one of those perfect games for Game Pass. In fact, I I wish it was developed with Game Pass in mind from the beginning. <gasps> yeah, I, I know that's that feels bad. Okay. That feels wrong. Unfortunately, uh, if we do credit and then play that, he has no money. Obviously, we have no money. Mm -hmm. So I think all we have to do is get our money up. Credit, credit, play. Yeah, you could do credit Rashida, show him what it is, play. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think we want to draw that many more cards. No. So I think we just do credit, credit, play. It's so bad when you see that after making like, mm -hmm. yeah. What is this? This card is not. Uh. Anyway, yes, Hi-Fi Rush. Like that. I love Hi-Fi Rush. Legitimately, I'm a huge fan of that game. But it's like 
maybe 20% too much exploration versus how much like fun rhythm combat there is. Okay, so this is important. We have Spin Doctor. Yeah. We want to pay for exposes. Am I gonna... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Spin Doctor is going to save our Obakata. And mainly it's really safe in archives. And until mm -hmm. he flips, the Regensis is really good. He's going to camp the remote server as much as possible. So all we need to set up is a win condition where we can basically score one more hybrid release. Uh, that's not going to work. So we need to get Obakata behind uh, what's it called. So this might be a triple install play. Okay, so Spin Doctor is out in the open. Yeah, it but then you res it. Yeah. And do we let him get a, a thingy? No, Probably you, not. Uh, no. At all costs. Snare into the remote? Nah. So J Jeff is not a snare and remote believer, neither am I, which means it's probably the right play. Mm. Um, I think you can do that. Mm. Yeah, with the safety. He's going to run the spin doctor first, though. And if you don't crack the spin doctor, he uh, will flip the agenda and doesn't do anything. And then you have to put a thing in front of it, an anemone. Uh, an in front of this server, server yeah. seven? Yeah. yeah. But he uh, is playing this very like smart. <clears throat> mm hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Jeff is somebody who um, doesn't respect snare and remote. It's a play I also never make uh, because if they don't run it, it's so bad. Hi, Pout Surfer. How's it going? Okay, so this is really ugly. I think we can let him trash it because we have another one. But if we shuffle back in the Obakata, <laughs> it turns off our like our win play. Yeah, yeah. We'll and be... I don't think he's going to run remote in the last click. So I think we just let him. I, yeah, I, I was exactly yeah. what I'm thinking. Like... Oh, he's bouncing off of it. That's smarter. He's punishing us. Ugh. So here, <laughs> now yeah. I think he has to uh, respect check. We're going to score this for Genesis and be on game point. Right. Well, he's on zero clicks now. So we can. Yeah, we can do We it. can use this safely. We just, stay, just keep the Obakata. Keep there. the Obakata. Bring back a spin stock buyback. Buyback. Yeah, uh, exactly. For sure. Right. But this is like the huge play. <laughs> I'll try about to spit some bars. You know how this goes. Yo, hit the button. Hit the button. I'm, I'm going to hit the regenesis Yeah, button. yeah. Just don't play any cards like I've learned to not do. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Oh. How about we get? Do the PE first. Technically always that, right? All right. Uh, and then oops. Uh... Oops. Oops. Game point. You then check archives. Whoops. And then what are we going to put in archives? Another Obakata? Uh, no. No. Uh, the mm, Sison Dan? Rashida. I don't know. Yeah, Rashida. We don't want to overdraw. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Looks like a battle tech game with a nice time mechanic. I know that you're yeah. uh, a big mechs person. I've never really caught into mech stuff, but I reckon um the world's gonna change a bit when I, I isn't from software doing a mech game? Yeah, they are. Well hey, for, pouch, how's it going? Didn't from software like one of their earliest games was a from yeah. was a armored core, yeah. is that them? Yeah, exactly. Remember. Yeah. All right, so Cat's Cradle is now down. Uh this means that every turn we can put something in the remote server and he has to check it. Mm -hmm. We have one more hybrid release. If we top deck it, we win. Mm -hmm. Right? Like we yes, have one in fifty. Of course, Maybe the Rashida was actually right. Hmm. So he's going to maybe run HQ here. Well, but, I mean, the spin doctor will draw it for us for sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll just put it. What's our turn? We have 13 credits, which actually like goes pretty quickly. Can we perk? Search. Maybe. Just make it a little bit harder for him. Like, he, like he's at exactly an enemy level. Yeah, perch. Mm -hmm. We're in, we're not. Yeah, it's not fast. Yeah, we're yeah, we're, we're just fine. waiting. It's we're fine. just waiting to draw something interesting. I would and then... turn and throw a retribution. Yeah. Yeah. He's really strong now, I'm afraid. Yeah, I know. It's really strong. And there's a lot of options. And mm -hmm. it's not, I don't know. It's hard to play against. It's like, like this sort of like click for credits is the right play is not something people love. And uh, I think a lot of times, like, I'll just cheese it. Like this mm -hmm. sort of click for credits is the right play. Like getting a single access is really, really expensive. And probably not right. Like you can just camp the remote server and run anything we put in it. Mm -hmm. We're going to put a snare in it. <laughs> Jeff loves that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. should do it. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing a new armored core. I think they showed off gameplay or a video or something i'm just getting uh, into elden ring again there's a wargroove sequel coming yeah, out we'll, really, yeah we'll go to that one for sure well i was i played a lot of wargroove during the pandemic so 2 and 15 to hit snare let's go yep like these single axes are so expensive there's <clears> only <throat> one uncontested <throat> obakata if he steals the hybrid we're upset but like this is so expensive like not only is this a card and immediately he was on six so he has to do something yeah that's right give us a credit yeah. We need this. I love how you're highlighting yeah, or hovering wait, on waiting fire. For it, waiting <laughs> for it. Let me do it. Give me a credit. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Hit a snare. Fine. Well, that's fine. fine. It's basically fine. Equal, equal to a snare. All right. Fine. So uh, we have a stock. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're putting this in the. Stay we don't. The remote click for to hide it. Or draw? No. Install? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Reveal. Uh, credit credit. We're okay. no rush. Yeah. No hi-fi rush. That is. Now the, the Corsica boss. Sorry, what? Uh, first he's saying, did you see the Suikoden Masters? I'm not sure I know what Suikoden is. I've heard that name in gaming. I don't yeah, know for sure. It's one of those that like I I file away in a thing I'll look up later. <laughs> yeah. Hey Wyatt, I just joined, so I'm not sure how we got here. But as a semi-frequent watcher, seeing us running PE hits different given last week's <laughs> announcement. 
<laughs> no, I know it's a deck list of the, of the week, but why I, I totally think like P is in a really, really interesting spot. Oh, do you while exposing an enemy? He's running. He has to run. So he knows there's an enemy. So he's mm -hmm. now figuring out whether he wants to run this. Yeah. So the calculation is how bad is Sting? Uh, mm. Here we have Resonancy. Yep. Money doesn't matter. Is there anything in Archives? A news team? Uh, yeah. Just a news team. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is so expensive. Mm -hmm. And he has to run. Is he even going to bother? It's not he... snares, let's go. Is Stargate the answer to all problems? Seems like the only good runner win con. I think it's Stargate's like really good for trap decks, mm -hmm. obviously, but it's still really hard for like say an Anarch deck on Stargate mm -hmm. to run R and D when it's like double Anansi. It's mm -hmm. just like no one deals with Anansi. And again, while Endurance was banned and Endurance wasn't great into Anansi, like Big Ice is now just kind of relevant. And I think people mm -hmm. are gonna get kind of shocked with that. With Franz like this, who needs an enemy? <laughs> all right, they gotta pay for this one too. He has to pay two. Did he do the first half of deuces? I guess we'll find out. We're not making decisions here. He's not going to run this snare. Because he saw it's an enemy. So seeing the retribution here makes it maybe more likely to take the news team as uh Right, because he knows there's not he has the clicks, left, but Or he just... And yeah. now we're off Obakata. Like, now he no longer wins in a single. Like, this mm -hmm. is so rough. And again, buyback is worth 3,000 credits. It's not there's that we a, can... There's a buyback on the way, yeah. He only has so many hit points left. Yeah, he's not going to run it. This feels like a guaranteed win right now. No. Not yes. guaranteed. One hundred percent, one hundred and ten percent. If we lose, I will. Um, <laughs> he knows he needs to potentially run this. Yeah, he's got two clicks left. What's he gonna do? Probably got me here. Mm -hmm. You gotta bait him. You gotta bait him. Okay, you're the worst. <laughs> you don't know. You know you must. A second. <laughs> looking at this R&D yeah Stargate would be hard and the thing is like Tithe is also really well positioned against Anarch unless you're running different breakers because like you can't play three for that and you can't take the net damage one of us only tells lies <laughs> it's like the mind shuffle from Yu-Gi-Oh is the mind shuffle a dance they do I think it's a TikTok dance yeah. okay cool yeah. yeah I know TikTok dances for sure yeah it's fun two clicks left here Again, he's only on five plus eight cards. Mm -hmm. And like, look at all these agendas in his score area. Is he close to winning? Sort of. But how much net damage did he take to get here? <laughs> like, how much net damage do you yeah, just end up taking in the P match? Like, yeah, so sure. much net damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't. It's up to you, Pat. It's up to you. <laughs> no, I'm not going to res it. Okay, cool. Because we promised. Yeah, we promised. We promised. That's the best thing you can do is just promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because people take you for your word. Your word's important. It really is. Like, like this will carry forward in a like a tit for tat situation into the future. Yeah. Anyways, you can absolutely, yeah, we're just gonna absolutely like, snare the crap snare out of them. <laughs> oh boy, I hope we draw retribution now because that'd be very oh, funny. Oh yeah, we can retribute. Let's go. Oh, we win. <laughs> we win anyway. But wouldn't you rather oh, no, no, do no, that no, to no, retribution? No, no. Let's get out of here. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, don't. Mm? Don't. Yes. Let him see. When it. you say don't, you Let mean yes. See it. Let him see it. Okay. Come on, we're BMing. We gotta go faster. Okay. Good. Good game. Good game. That. That's a. Yeah. That's. <laughs> I don't think it's as, un it's as unfair as you might think, Peter. Like we do neutralize each other, <laughs> like matter and antimatter colliding. <laughs> that's what our thoughts are like. So like. Jeff does a really good job as like looking back at the replays and saying like, okay, how do we play this mm -hmm. wrong? What could we have done? Um, I think it's really hard. I mm -hmm. think you need to get like, basically, if you don't steal Nobukata, the chance of you winning the game is impossible. Mm -hmm. And the time, like the longer the game goes, it's like we can make more and more unfair ways to protect Obukata, mm -hmm. right? Like if you get a double enemy remotes of Obukata is unstealable. Yep. And so if you don't steal an early Obukata, the amount of agendas <clears throat> you literally need to win the game is unfathomable. It's like almost impossible to not win with stealing an Obukata. And stealing an Obukata is so difficult because of the PE tax, let alone all the other damage you have to take. Like it's mm -hmm. such a difficult matchup. And like we were not making ridiculously complex decisions. So mm -hmm. much of this is the inevitability of everything. Yeah, R&D was, was cheap for a while. Uh, you were dodging <laughs> snares. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we went for the remote snare as a play that we hate. But <laughs> it felt fun. I don't think I would have done it.
to sound inevitably promise not to res the play of the game yeah yo if you say you won't like but that's the thing too like the deuces is as much as it is obviously a hit point that's important it's like understanding there's anemone here mm-hmm. and you kind of do want to go to get it res out of the way like if we ever pay and admittedly being on game point makes it a bit more difficult but if mm-hmm. we ever pay to anemone and then it's not like an obakata that's good for you because mm-hmm. now and they're now the problem is credits. Yeah, yeah and like you saw Jeff clicked for credits a lot. He can't play all his economy cards. We didn't see any daily cast hit the table, but like this is not like a deck that has liberated. This deck has more uh, economy based off interaction, which can be difficult. We saw one daily cast at the table. Yeah, I think that was damage on <clears throat> there. Oh, maybe there was one up there. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Um, but like the fermenters are so important mm-hmm. for this. But like Anarch maybe with liberated accounts and fermenter, maybe that goes further. But it's still so hard with the breaker suite. Mm-hmm. Hey, Ba, getting a DNA on HQ felt pretty clutch for UTBH. It was a great doof protection. Yeah, we got it up early, and, like, we just have to get that up. Uh, we did hit two doofs, but, again, it's because they were hard to play. And it's uh, Cat's Cradle, not Amina. Admittedly, Amina would probably not be worth it. Not that HQ ever went ran. Yeah. Yeah, if you didn't get a DNA HQ, I think the matchup goes a different way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just, an, like, uh, a Nancy. And I think I've seen a lot of people who are just, like... We'll we'll just send it full speed, Kevin, into the um into the ice on HQ. Like if on turn two we res an Anansi, obviously that's bad for us. But if you're playing around this specific deck where you know the entire economy is tied into like a stock buyback, mm-hmm. the less you play Netrunner, mm-hmm. the more like on a back foot we are. Yeah. Because our economy does not exist until like turn five. And we mm-hmm. have to go out of the way to feed you agenda. So like I do think just maybe again, full speed Kevin into the uh uh, Anansi or DNA Tracker. DNA Tracker is worse than Anansi, I think, on the early game. Um, that might be right, but it's hard. Mm. It's really, really hard. Okay. As the deck goes of the week, um, again, the fact that you don't know what our economy package is also changes. Some of these decks are doing different things. Again, Hokusai Grinder, you can play more attrition stuff. You can play assets. It's really, really difficult. I was in archives away from winning. Yeah, there's Obos in archives too, right? I don't know if you were playing around entirely... Um, What's it called? News teams? Not news teams, or... but like playing around with Genesis is interesting because mm-hmm. you just need to go and you need to flip archives. Mm-hmm. And with the two Kusanagis, I think running archives is easier than it is at other points, but it's hard. Do you have to just sit back and click for credits and camp the remote in this matchup? It's hard because they can actually put stuff in the remote server that does matter if you do or don't run. It's mm-hmm. not like other Genteki decks that the only thing they can install advance advance is agendas, which actually is true for us, but um, it's still kind of difficult. I don't know. Anyway, mm-hmm. I, I do think, though, as few accesses on centrals to some extent can't be... No, that's not true. Like, you just need to get an Obokata. Yeah, you're right, though. The Corp can't really win without an Obokata unless they get, like, a bunch of House of Knives. Yeah, I, I don't know if you actually do interact. Like, it, it kind of feels like... um, more, uh, What is that barrier that used to exist that you took a damage when you went through? Kaku- Kakugo, yeah. Kakugo. Yeah, it kind of feels like that. Yeah. Still enough one-pointers where... Yeah, you can keep archives clean, you're right, mm-hmm. I think, when you have that many one-pointers. Okay, um, we're going to go into, oh, God, we said we played more Jinteki today, but we said we play Restoring Humanity. <laughs> so, so so we're going to do a different Jinteki. I don't know why you're so unhappy. Buckle up. Um, okay. We got a new We can segment. change the plan. Yeah, we can. We probably we can just change we the plan. We can probably yeah. just play the plan. Um, thanks for the game. Yo, Jeff, you too. We can play Iswak. Uh, Pat wanted the title of the street to be called It's Whack, and then we play Iswak, and I was on board. He was, yeah. For like... Maybe a minute until I realized we'd have to play a swalk. About 45 seconds, yeah. Yeah, it didn't yeah. last very mm-hmm. long. Hey, Cody, how's it going? What's up, Welcome. dudes? Okay, so I have a question. I'm working on a video. This is not exactly related to Jiteki at all, but I'm working on a video where we're talking about um, agenda distributions. I basically have a video that I have a thesis talking about big agendas. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, basically look at the math and the number behind agenda distributions in Netrunner and see like, you know, the defensibility and how hard it is to score to seven points. Um, And I ran into an issue that I'm hoping that somebody watching this either can explain this math to me or know (laughs) somebody that can maybe like you can ask a couple questions down the line and then it can come back to here, whether it's live or in the comments. I'm very interested to know what the results of this is because we have a small problem that I can't solve. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I understand why we're having this problem, I can move forward with the video because I'm kind of stuck. This is how it works real quick. Again, we have a video coming up and I don't want to entirely show my hand here because I've built something that I'm going to share, which I think actually turned out really cool. A huge shout out also to Jeff who helped with this. Um, But the idea is hypergeometrics. You might know what this is. Give me one second. Wait, are you going to share? No. Okay. Uh, stat. So. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So y'all are probably familiar to some extent with hypergeometric uh, calculators. These come up a lot when it comes to an- analyzing probabilities when it comes to uh 
card games, right? Mm-hmm. So the idea is of what a hyper geometric geometric probability calculator is. It can give you probabilities when it comes to the chance of certain outcomes while when sampling from a population without replacement. Well, I think we're all familiar to this when we like we build a deck and we're doing like we're yeah. running through like, oh, what are the chances I see this card in my opening? Exactly. Hand? That's what we're doing here. This is basically. where this comes up a lot. So our population size is say our deck. It has 49 cards in it. We determine our number of successes in population. So say there's six cards that we'd be really interested to have mm-hmm. in our opening hand. Our <laughs> sample size is just going to be one opening hand without a mulligan. And we want to find at least one card in our opening hand, right? Mm-hmm. So we hit calculate. It gives us a result. The one that we care about is populates the probability of finding x is one or greater so the chance of us finding one or more of the six cards we're trying to open with our hand is 52875 so more than half the time this happens seems like deer in the headlights might be helpful oh dear fantastic because i got a really good question then so people also can use this Mm -hmm. in interesting ways to kind of find out this like really naive and there's a lot of assumptions made here but i still think it can produce really valuable heuristics to talk about again the defensibility of certain agenda suites so let's change how we use this we're going to have 49 cards mm-hmm. at a corp deck, and we're going to imagine a corp deck that is on 49. They're on 20 agenda points, so we're running 10 agendas, all of them two points mm-hmm. each. So if we do 10 here, and then our sample size, this is what we're going to try and find out. Because we know what our number of successes in sample is, is four. Mm-hmm. So the idea is here is like we're taking axes off the top of R&D, again, without replacement. So axes a card from R&D, throw into the garbage. And how many cards do we physically have to see? Different cards without replacement for us to <clears> hit <throat> four steals, which will be four agendas. Yeah. And have you said that the 10 represents 10 two-point agendas? Exactly. Yeah. That's how many successes, <clears throat> which they're Yeah, 10 you need to 49. get to eight points yes. for four agendas to win. So... If we want to figure out what is the probability of us accessing Mm -hmm. enough agendas to win, we want to figure out when X equals or greater than four is above 50%, because that should be the point in which we are likely to win. And Mm -hmm. again, there's a lot of assumptions about how narrow it works. We we forgot to do something important, which is we forgot to give the chat a ripcord that they can pull in case they ever... No, 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 no. Okay, hold on. I'm on a roll. roll You're on a roll. You're on a roll. So if you hit calculate here, uh, (laughs) this doesn't work. So you have to refresh. This just happens. (laughs) Uh But say if we go 49, 10... And I'll just spoil the answer. The answer is somewhere between 17 and 18, which is actually really fascinating because that's the number that I was taught playing Netrunner. Mm-hmm. So on 17 axes, we have about a 48% <clears throat> chance of finding enough agendas. If we take that to 18 axes, we have 54. So the number clearly falls somewhere between 17 and 18. The probability of us finding four more agendas uh, half mm-hmm. the time in that odds. Cool. Now, so I'm using this in my video and I basically compile a bunch of stats on a Google Doc so we can share it, look at different agenda Mm -hmm. agenda distributions, and it gets way more complicated than this. This is a really simple case, but what about in a case where all your successes are weighted differently, like three-point agendas versus one-point agendas? Mm -hmm. Because now it becomes a hypergeometric, but then the hypergeometric has to be like attached to probabilities of certain hypergeometric, like certain times hitting three is going to get to seven points, but sometimes it's not. It Mm -hmm. gets a fair bit more complicated and it's doable and we did the math and we get some good numbers. However... I wanted to make sure my math was right. So in short, I built a script that can simulate this. All we do is we basically tell how many, how big our deck is, how many agendas we have in our deck, and we shuffle the deck up, and then we draw cards off the top of the deck until we steal eight agenda points. Or sorry, seven agenda Mm -hmm. points, of course. And it'll give us a number. It'll be like, on this game, it took you 22 accesses to find the, you know, the four agenda points in this sort of deck. Oh, Thanos has a good point. I don't think that's incorporated into your model. This is without replacement. Mm-hmm. HQ wants me to see a card more than once. 100% Thanos. Mm-hmm. And there's like so many um, assumptions we're making about mm-hmm. this. Like obviously like running HQ is seeing a card is with replacement. What kind of thing would a corp mulligan as well? Like there are so <clears throat> many things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even like the value of single accesses changes. Like maybe the only card in a remote server is an agenda. I'm not saying that this is an accurate representation of Netrunner, mm-hmm. but it will give us an accurate heuristic of how defensible certain agenda suites are. Again, there's so many assumptions. It's very naive, <laughs> but at least we're broadly going to get somewhere where we can see certain agenda suites are just bleed. Like they lose to certain single accesses more than others, right? There's so many reasons why this is not accurate, mm-hmm. but it's very usable. Okay. So the key assumption is hypergeometric distribution is independence. Okay, dear, I think you're getting to where I, 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 I the problem I'm running into. I just need to fall, finish my thought to explain what the problem we're running into. So I use the simulation. And for my simulation, again, we shuffle up the deck and then we can rip off the top of the deck and we see in this game, we needed 22, you know, accesses without replacement on R&D, not accurate to a Netrunner game. Mm-hmm. And then we can do that simulation again, like half a million times. And then you come down to an average. And what I'm finding out is that my averages, based off of the hypergeometrics, are accurate, but they're up by one. So for instance, this 49, 10, 17, 4, the hypergeometric tells us that we win more than half the time, or just half the time, somewhere between 17 and 18. But when I do the simulation, 
half a million times. My number is 18.18. But in half a million games of just ripping cards off the top of the deck, the average win is 18. And anytime you change the agendas, it lines up with the hypergeometric, but it's generally up by one. It's always the hypergeometric, but one more access. And I'm trying to figure out why that is. My guess is either one of two things. Firstly, that this is going for 50% win rate. And then somehow when we do the actual case, we stop when we win. So it should just be skewed slightly above 50% mm. win rate. That kind of makes sense to me. But the other thing that I think I'm more confident about is that when I calculate my result, my 18.18 .18 for the simulation, I'm calculating the strict average. I'm taking every single game that we played. I'm taking all the nouns of accesses and just dividing it by the number of games we play. And that gives me 18.18. .18. I don't know if that's right. I'm worried that we don't need the average. We need either the mean or the mode or the median, whatever those mean. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not a very good probabilistics guy, but I th either think that our number is always <clears throat> one higher because either we're practically winning and that's just requires one more access than theoretical winning or because we're calculating an, an average where we should be calculating like the highest point on the bell curve or something mm -hmm. like that. I think this calculates the highest point on the bell curve, not the most weighted point on the bell curve. Um, if that makes sense. This is when you go from 10 agendas to nine. No, this is the exact same simulation, 49, 10. Like with no difference to the input, the practical simulation always gets to slightly higher. Hypergeometric suggests about 17.4, 17.5. And my practical suggests 18.18. .18. And every time we compare my practical to the hypergeometric, it's always a bit higher. Are you sure you haven't made an index error in code? No, I've double checked. Jeff has even been kind enough. He's sat down with me to go through it. He's replicated it. We get the same results. So I think there's just some uh, misunderstanding about either averaging or practical versus theoretical. So you said your simulation rips off the top, right? So the simulation end once you hit four agenda. <clears throat> exactly. Uh, no, uh, This yes. The simulation ends once you win. For this case, it is once you hit four two-point agendas. But it'll be different, obviously, based off of different agenda distributions. In that case, it isn't a proper hy hypergeometric. That's the sort of sentence we want to hear. What do you mean? <laughs> like, genuinely, I'm excited to figure out why we're wrong. But it, yeah, it doesn't end when you get to seven. It gets when you end seven or plus. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you win on eight or on nine based off agenda suites. <laughs> Since the hypergeometric is giving the cum sum, probably for four agendas and 18, probably five agendas and 18. Hold on. What happens if a sim simulation runs exactly 18 times and reports a percent of wins? Is he, I'm well, not isn't sure. Isn't that what we're seeing here on on this page? The cumulative property probability bottom. Like you're comparing apples and oranges. Tell me more. It's you know you wait to wake up to adds Pat's week. Although it sounds more like a <laughs> second week. <laughs> Would it be a difference between arithmetic means, regular average, and geometric mean? Burden. I think that's exactly it. But I don't know how to express that. Mm -hmm. I think we're doing a very like simple average, and it's not the sort of like <laughs> kind of average that geometric gets to. Dear, I think Pete welcome to the stream. The properly. Hey, welcome. I joined. What's going on? Uh, Gustavo, we're just trying to solve a simple <laughs> math problem before we can move on to the stream because I'm working on a video and I'm getting... Actually, crushed. Gustavo, you're, you're part of an interesting phenomenon I'm seeing right now, which is the total number of viewers going up, which is uh, the unexpected <laughs> result. My hypothesis was the opposite. <laughs> okay, hold on. You're comparing the probability of getting four plus in the hypergeometric with the amount of times to get exactly four in the simulation. Oh, yeah, that does sound reasonable. The probability of getting four more in the hypergeometric against exactly four. So the number we should be comparing to is exactly four, but that's massively low. So that doesn't line up at all. Based on the numbers on the screen, I'm not sure as simple as <laughs> I don't know, because that doesn't make sense. You want to see it? I'll just show you. I wanted to kind of keep this to the video, but I'll show you this real quick again. If I know this might not be interesting, but hold mm -hmm. on. Uh, patch solve for a second. Oh, uh, so uh, anyways, people, how about that? Um, we love games, don't we? I mean, oh, did, did people get their world breakers? I assume probably this chat probably has a probably a, a higher percentage, let's not calculate it, of people who <laughs> who ordered world breakers. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing that in person. It's the kind of game that I feel like Andre is not good at. So I'm looking forward to actually finding people who, you know, can give me a challenge. Uh, all right. What, you're showing it? Yeah, I'm showing it real quick. Uh, Let's show it. Okay, so this is the thing I put together. Okay, so how many cards in your deck? 49. Mm -hmm. uh, how many agendas we have of each? So we have no three-pointers. We have 10 two-pointers. We have no one-point agendas. Uh, how many times we write the test? I'm just going to run 50,000. I don't know mm -hmm. what this is going to do. 
and it's going to run it. So we yep. get a couple things here. Firstly, if you look at the numbers here, it says we have one agenda per 4.9 cards, super important. And to win the game, the runner wins always by stealing four agendas and it averages out about on 18.16 axes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you look <laughs> at the graph. Thank you, River. This is the graph and you see the graph, right? Like 18.18, .18, you'd think maybe it would be this middle point here, which is about 17 to 18. Like, I think the high point is what the probability on the hypergeometric adds, but we're going for the average by just doing an av, like in a very naive average, <clears throat> which I think because this is more of a tail heavy bell curve, it's not like an even bell curve that our average gets skewed to the right because there are just on average more games where it goes longer, but on average it's 18 axes. So I think we're just inherently measuring something different, right? Mm -hmm. Today's episode, Andre and Pat square the circle. <laughs> All these squares make a circle. All these squares make a circle. I think you're going to show the spreadsheet, dear. I think Stat Trek shows a properly summed cumulative probability. Implicitly unique accesses. Yeah, they're implicitly unique without replacement. Like, this is not HQ. This is not no recursion. This mm -hmm. is just ripping cards off the top of the deck. Like, just drawing cards. Yeah. Tanuki, uh, you can find the, like, the the timestamp of when this conversation starts. If you are having trouble getting to sleep. Like, I have a lot of trouble with that myself. The problem is that, like... When I was younger, my father told me to start doing like complex math to fall asleep to. I'm like, well, now I'm up till 3 a.m. And yeah. I'm just like, I'm on my like my two to the power of X. <laughs> We're not better at math somehow either. Anyways, this is what I'm getting to. I'm not going to run too much longer here. Mm -hmm. If anyone who's watching this has an idea of what we're doing differently, again, I'm pretty sure our axis is, is correct. I think it's just our output is like a different thing that we're measuring than <laughs> the uh, hypergeometric. Tanuki, that's exactly what's happening. Are you trying to justify your hate of five threes? Yeah, Tanuki, yeah, exactly. 100%. Mm -hmm. We are. And I think we have some good math at least. Yeah, here. we're going we're gonna to bring this to Null Signal Games HQ. Uh, they will not be able to deny the evidence. Maybe the skews with Sir Office started to dismiss that because I assumed it would have been averaged in. Yeah, no, I think our average skews this a bit because it's mm -hmm. it's tail heavy. Um, but I'll show you more of this in a video. Um, the video is going to be interesting. You can see what Mad Dash does. The graphs get more interesting. It's really, really cool. I think it's a skew. I think it's mm -hmm. because it is tail heavy. It technically will be higher than the hypergeometric. <clears throat> That's my conclusion so far. And even if we're wrong about that, it's okay because all of our data is accurate. Like we know it's accurate. We ran the simulation. I just can't explain why it's different than the hypergeometric. But I think we're measuring two different things. Mm. But that being said, this number is still correct. Mm -hmm. And seeing what different agenda suites do is valuable. All right. That's enough of that. Thank you so much again. If anyone has a good insight on that, I appreciate it mm -hmm. um, because I've spent a lot of time on this. Did you make that with the NumPy library? Uh, oh, I see. I think so. That's Matt. Uh, what's it called? Matt Pro Lib? The Matt Plot Lib? I've learned how to do it today, so <laughs> I'm not actually too deep into mm -hmm. it. But it's, yeah, it's just Python. I think NumPy is in there a bit. We thought the simulation sort of implies that a corp needs to draw 40% of their deck to even draw enough agendas to win the game. Oh, yeah, that's interesting, right? Like, it depends on your agenda suite. Here inherently you're like one in 4.9 so to get four agendas you need 20 cards so 20 out of 50 yeah you need to draw about 40 percent of your deck mm -hmm. yeah conclusion is that gfi still busted cody the conclusion is <laughs> gfi is so unimaginably busted mm -hmm. like there's some really interesting conclusions from this which again i'll talk about in the video the idea is like <laughs> playing global food initiatives in five three decks mm -hmm. actually makes so much sense if you're expecting the whole field to be on mad dash like so much sense it's putting in one pointers in your deck makes so much sense if you're expecting to play around Mad Dash, which I think competitively you are. Mm -hmm. And Global Food Initiative is the most busted thing in the game, like by a mile. Just like the basic GFI and two pointer agenda suite is like miles ahead even of the 44 6. Um, it's absolutely buck wild. The, the math here is really, really interesting. Is there a Mad Dash data here? I'll show you because, dear, I, I reckon you no, care about this. Your, your video. Your, this is a great preview for your video. Oh I my know, God. You're ruining the whole math. Hold oh, on, you're hold ruining on. everything. Like, I have worked on this. I'm actually really happy to show this off. Um, I just need to open up again in a second. Everyone had better go to that. When that video launches, it had better be the most popular video on the channel, Pie. except for any video that I was in. Uh, and you promised that after you're done talking about math, I can talk about Zor Pilgrimage of the Slurfs. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> cool, cool. Thank you. Okay, so my mic is not on. I know. When to go on, you don't want to know. All right, so like the very basic agenda deck that like not, nobody likes, 44 cards, right? We're gonna play mm -hmm. six three-pointers, nothing else. We're not gonna play any global food initiatives. And then we're gonna run this 50,000 times. We're gonna plot it and you'll see the mad dash ability of this deck mm -hmm. is absurd. It is absolutely absurd. Uh, blue is the normal amount of accesses. If you look at the data, it's about 19.29 accesses. That's absurd. That's really, really, really high. That's near the highest you can get, but not the highest. But then Mad Dash <laughs> shaves that down to 12.9. That Mad Dash is worth 6.4 extra accesses. It is the best thing you can do by a mile, and you see the data. Mm -hmm. um, it's still tail heavy with the Mad Dash, even more tail heavy. But like the Mad Dash ability of this thing is absolutely busted. You should do this. 
Um, going from this and then seeing what you can do to actually add this together and adding things like five threes, like, sorry, global food initiatives and one pointers actually brings these a fair bit together without sacrificing a lot of the um, this part here. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. Andre, I'm mad that you made graphs as nice in one day. Yo, I, uh, <laughs> it was really fun. I had to figure out how to do this. It was actually pretty good. Is this in any deck? This is in any deck of 44 sixes with six threes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Against any runner deck with Mad Dash. Now, again, there's so many naiveties about this deck. Sorry, I'm hiding the legend, but Red's Mad Dash. Um, right? Like, this is not 100% accurate, right? Like, I'm assuming you can Mad Dash all the time when you need to. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming a lot of stuff. Um, but this is a basic idea. This is not going to be accurate to the game. Also, like, how easy is it for the Corp to score with this agenda suite? Like, there's so many things that matter more about this. This is just, like, yeah. basic heuristics about how defensible the agenda suite is and what Mad Dash abstractly does to single, very bad single and access. Yeah, it, it's like you're assuming the runner will always perfectly Mad Dash, yeah. right? That's, what, that's what's going on here. How does a runner guarantee staking the Mad Dash? Well, if you're playing against the NBN deck, um, all the agendas have additional costs of steel, so you you just ignore it run back you could be playing stargate hmm. you could be playing falsified you can play playing pinhole threading there's a lot of ways again mad dash doesn't come doesn't convert 100 of the time we're imagining it did and then you see how big of a deal it is for specifically this agenda suite is buck wild for the gfi agenda suite is also really buck wild and then on top of it for uh for there's ways to make this actually way not as bad into mm -hmm. Mad Dash, but we'll get to that in the video um this stuff is cool i'll also share all this code um it's all on github so that'll be soon i just need to Put it together. <clears throat> All right. That's enough math. Everyone loves math. Yeah. A lot of modern people like math, I think. Yeah, they have to. They, have they to. must, right? And being Dex is still playing degree mill. Um, some of them are, yeah. 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 Like I've always felt like in, in the Netrunner community, like I, I was good at math in school, but like in the Netrunner community, I'm not like in a STEM field. I'm a creative. <laughs> so I said creative with creative. like contempt. <laughs> yeah, no, I well, because I have self contempt. Yeah, 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 the, yeah like yeah, that fuels my creativity as a writer. Yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell people that I actually have a new job as a writer. Yeah. Oh, uh, have we haven't said that on stream? No, we haven't. Oh. I think I was going to, and I'm like, well, I, I kind of want to wait until it's like it's official, a thing. official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I joined Idos Montreal as a narrative designer, aka writer. That's super cool, man. It is extremely cool. I can't talk about the project I'm working on. Um, but I'm really excited. Yeah, it's got. There's a huge opportunity for me to like have a a great impact on the like this world, this interesting place. This... I'm super stoked. Yeah, that I can't wait to. Up. Again, Pat also does like narrative stuff for No Signal, so exactly, like we're yeah. gonna even so... see more of that on both mm -hmm. sides, which is great. Yeah, you were like out of a job for like a week or two. It was really funny yeah, when you're I... like, I quit. Oh, I have a new job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I so I I gave my two weeks notice to SAP, which is which is a great company. I actually had a great time working for them, but like yeah. the job was not for me. Um. And then, like the Monday, the, the the week after I gave my two weeks, I a friend reached out and said, "Hey, apply to this thing at Idos." And so I did. And like just because of they needed someone so quickly, because of like other that's circumstances. the only way you sell desperation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, "Hey, <laughs> you, like, I you're desperate. I fit. I, yeah. I I am the I'm the person you go to when you're desperate. It works for interviews. Works for dates. Yep. And like, yes. Yeah, so, so they just hired me really quickly. I literally had two weeks where I was out of a job. Yeah, <laughs> like my initial plan was, oh yeah, I'll, I'll spend like three months working on my yeah, portfolio and like, and then try to get yeah. a creative job, and then like, then there we go. Uh, no, I'm not working on Assassin's Creed. That's Ubisoft, not Idos. But yeah, no. Um, uh oh, <laughs> I don't know what Pat's working on. I've been just saying, I do. Think Why don't they... people like SAP though? Like, I had a fine time at SAP, but I was like so into like a very small part of it. I don't think I realized it had like a it's negative. Huge. Well, SAP is, well, huge, but, is huge, but some people have said they really dislike SAP, and I don't know why. Well, now Except, that you're not there. Well, yeah. Well, now that I'm there, there's, yeah. there obviously their like uh, morality rank in the world went up. Yeah. So yeah, like anytime someone gives me money, they are evil uh, by default. So that like changes things a bit. I think users at SAP having issues. SAP equals super auto pets. You know, when <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm usually there. When, yeah, super auto pets has about a hundred thousand employees worldwide. Yeah. And they're uh, all they're all figuring out the numbers they should attach to those dogs, and they're doing a good job. I haven't picked up Super Autopets in a while. It's really, I was fun. really enjoying it's it. It's really yeah. fun. I had it on Steam Deck just to mm -hmm. casually play oh, yeah, like on balconies in summer. Oh, you know what's also great on Steam Deck? Zor it's Pilgrimage Zor of the so the Swarps. It's a I saw you added your your wish list. It's a hex based tactical combat game slash survival game. It's still in early access. There's still a lot of flaws, a lot of things that are working out, but I think it's pretty compelling. So it's like what's the, the name again? Can you say the name again? Zor Pilgrimage of the fuck. Try it again. Zor Pilgrimage of the Swarps. Yeah. What do those words mean in the lore? Zor is like their god, which is also like under just like a light in the sky, like a comet. You okay. know, they're simple little furry creatures who don't understand things very well. Yeah. Yeah. You want to make sure people can hear me clearly no, when I'm talking important. about Zor, Pilgrim of the Swarfs. 
it's just a it's just an I early love, access game. I love the name. It's I so think good. I like I found it during the Steam Next Fest, and I'm just like I find it really compelling. It's a kind of game I want to keep following because it does a lot of things I like. It's I I've been comparing it to a streamlined Gloomhaven. Yeah, um, it looks like it. Yeah, because like you you're you're fighting you're playing against your own exhaustion. You have to make yeah. sure you beat this level. You collect everything. And it's got hexes. It's got hexes. Yeah, everyone yeah exactly. Hexes. I love hexes. Yeah, the more you say the name, the better it gets. I know. What's the name again? <laughs> yeah. Zor Pilgrimage of the Swarfs. It's by the people who made Solitarica. Another good name that I don't know what that mm-hmm. one is. Yeah. <laughs> Art Gloomhaven. Yo, Gloomhaven on digital is better than Gloomhaven on person. 100%. Can't wait till Frosthaven's yeah, on digital. Can't wait till Frosthaven's but that's digital. the sad thing is, like, I like the idea of Frosthaven tactically. I love but if the I'm, idea of playing the game. I yeah. don't like setting it up or keeping it in my house. Said, but, like, if it's a video game, I'd rather have something that even goes even further into the video I think game Frosthaven management. will, because it has, like, that sort of management, like, base management, resource yeah, management. Yeah, but the that's point of like Frosthaven fiddly. is, yeah, I know, but I kind of want the fiddliness. I mean, I want a house where I have a Gloomhaven room, is what I want. Oh, I know. We, we yeah. all want the... the and the Rivendell the Lego r- set room. And, yeah, Lego yeah. Set, yeah. By the way, uh, patreon.com slash Grid if you want to support uh, Andre getting a house where I can put my Gloomhaven table. Thanks, guys. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate the support. Uh, Smash that like button. Oh, man. Subscribe. Watch that math video. So said they ordered the Gloomhaven. Wait, what? They ordered the Gloomhaven helper app taken down? Wait, actually? That's so messed up. I'm, is... I'm doing live reporting right now. By the way, I'm going to Google Play. That's the best app. Like, I would not play Gloomhaven if it wasn't for that app. They didn't buy them. They, they just ordered put them it down? To... They, the... they ordered it. Like, like Isaac Childress ordered it taken down? Gloomhaven. That's so messed up. It's so good. Um. Yeah, one of those gamer tables where you can completely cover the game up. I honestly, like, <clears throat> at some point, that's a luxury I think people who play board games would want. But I've never played on one. And physically looking at it, it seems uncomfortable. And I just want to mm. test it before I have any opinions. Because it looks not comfortable. I don't want to be in a vault. Hmm. Mad dash that subscribe button. I think the maker of the app took it down voluntarily. Don't quote me on that. Oh, wow. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, I have it on PC. Like, we have a computer in the living room. And, like, we had it on PC. We didn't even mm-hmm. do it on an iPad. Yeah, just get one of those tables that cost $5,000. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Once again, patreon.com slash Metropole Grid. What table are you looking at? I'm not looking actually at any tables yet. Our, my apartment's not big enough for one of those. Um, once again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just like, I just want to try a table. I've never sat at one. The fact is, Zor Pilgrim of, Pilgrimage of the Swarfs is a digital asset itself, which means it is its own helper app. That's the nice thing about it. That's yeah. that's like how it's streamlined Gloomhaven. Yeah. Jiteki yeah. tonight, let's go start Swati. There is, Jiteki uh, <laughs> is like the faction. That probably would be least likely to play in general, but it has the most IDs that like I would dismiss. <laughs> yeah. Like nobody Hyobu, wants 100%. to play Hyobu. I'm covering the, the text, I'm aware, but like nobody has any reason to play Hyobu. Mm-hmm. Egg Infusion is its own thing, obviously. Iswak, Sirswati. So like we end up playing these, I guess. Mm-hmm. Builder Nation, Hostile Architecture, Rococo, Bad Pub, Regulatory Eyes. I do think <laughs> the Bad Pub stuff, we should maybe explore Bad Pub. I do think the like the white blade esque bad pub lockout deck with that builds no remote servers is like mm. pretty reasonable. What do we want to do today? I, I think we're Jinteki out. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I'm okay with. Oh man, I mean, I've I've played so little Parhelion, and then things got like shuffled up with the yeah. with the bands. I don't know. Like, I I want to revisit Op. Like, but I don't necessarily want to do. We play too much op here. We have okay, to. Yeah, like, we, we probably play too we much. We play too, yeah, play okay, too much op. Uh, okay, so what happens? And we played NBN last time I was here, so that leaves. HB. Okay, cool. How's HB harmonic ice these uh, days? It's not the best thing you can do. All right, let's do it. Um, Precision design harmonic ice. Let's go. Okay. No such thing as too much up. I know. RH is love. RH is life. Wow. That's wild. Yeah, it literally is life. Technically, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's just talk about HB. So Asa group, right? Like Sengren, um, is, he's happy. There's a lot of ways to make Asa. Asa is like incredibly flexible all the time. I like Asa a lot. It's hard to read what you're playing against. Uh, most mm-hmm. of them, basic ideas, things are remote servers, upgrades, whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Arctic's of tomorrow. I think there mm. might be a deck here that is good, but it's probably not fun. This was mentioned on the the video that you Sengren put up, mm-hmm. the p- kind of podcast. Uh, the idea is that maybe there's enough <clears throat> byroids that you can put stuff together, ice up everything, and then just... At Perhaps. some point, the runner runs out of economy. Well, yeah, and it, yeah, it, but it's, they it's don't what, have they don't have forever economy. It's hard to break this ice. They mm-hmm. don't have forever economy. It's hard to get it to work. Yeah, um, it, it's one of those that makes the runner want to run less, which makes it a an idea I don't want to see more of. I put this together for the yeah, sure. it's called okay. Thanks I Hate It, uh-huh. and it's a fifty nine card deck with eight agendas, Jesus which is actually like a really messed up aden- uh, agenda density. Mm-hmm. Like that is kind of it, this is actually like as inconsistent as this is. That is one of the best agenda distributions mm-hmm. you can get. And then we just basically play every byroid you can get your hands on, and then you have multiple win conditions. You have mm-hmm. austerity. You can build a remote server. You have embolus because I figured you could play embolus, and then <laughs> sure, you can just yep. like cycle agendas forever. 
uh, Pouch Server has a really good question, and I think Pouch Server was listening in on our conversation before the stream where you questioned how I pronounce Mario. Yeah, that's wrong. Uh, and so I pronounced it Asa, and I pronounced the runner Asa. I, Essa and Asa. I, Asa, I think Asa or Asa. I think it's so wild that they picked names that were that similar. This is something that happened in Flesh and Blood 2 where there was Kano and Ko in like one set apart. Oh, wow. It's one yeah, letter as well. One set apart is a mistake. And it's it's like, it's really difficult. Because like you could imagine this, like a world where Asa and Asa do not overlap whatsoever, but... I think we might be saying Essa wrong. Asha? Oh, is this wrong? Because Asa group has a, like a, an accent, right? Uh, no, it doesn't. No. I thought for a second it does. Maybe it's Asha. I don't know. Yesa. Yesa. Hey, Ginevra. How's it going? Oh, Ginevra. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Ginevra yeah. would know. Ginevra is pronunciation master in my mind. Yesa for Essa or Yesa for Asa? Uh, that will obviously clear that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, but Mario. Mario Kart. Do you want to play this? Kart. Yeah, let's do it. See how bad it is? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let's ruin some people's day. Yeah. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, great. Okay, so just to explain what we did HB here. HB and the fun. Because I built this off uh, off of screen. Mm -hmm. So the idea is we're playing as many Byroids. We're not playing entirely Byroids. Like some of this might be wrong. We're a Magnet because Magnet's just good enough. Yep. And we have a Drafter because whatever. Drafter's just fine. I do think an actual barrier that ends the run is probably worth looking at. Mm -hmm. We only have 12 influence. Like a, a Hagen, maybe? Yeah, Hagen would probably be fine. And mm -hmm. I think Hagen's actually pretty good right now because people are face checking, expecting Byroids. And then you can get them with like a Fermenter. The Utrasher mm -hmm. Fermenter or Amakua, heaven forbid. Not that Amakua, it's hard to get through this. Yeah, Hedonism, that's a good point. Like you can you can use context clues to know what you're talking about. 23 Mad Edge, a deck for this you should honestly it's one of the best things you can do um uh in probably all netrunner we have sprints to make sure our agendas are coming and going mm -hmm. we have austerity policy for remote server our economy is really bad uh besides regolith like this is the sort of list that you might want to go out of your way to maybe drop the attitude adjustments and play daily quest mm -hmm. i think this is the sort of dirtle daily quest deck <laughs> yeah daily quest would be interesting so i too. think that might be worth doing um, I'm just worried that we're going to lose to like targeted HQ pressure because we have austerity policy and that mm -hmm. kind of broadcasts when they need to run HQ. But regardless, this is just a good thing to be doing when all your ISIS gets clicked through, right? Yep. So I do think economy is probably not good. I don't think we have enough economy slots. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, we res hopefully some of our ice for next to free, like a two cut credit for HL3 is uh, kind of good. Uh, but like I do think economy is the issue here. So we'll see how we change that. Maybe we can play more next activation. <clears throat> hates five threes. I know it's nuky, but we're trying to prove a point here. It's like if yeah. these sort of things we're are trying actually, to make everyone hate them. But like if these sort of things are actually worth playing and i don't think this deck is good i think mm -hmm. from a distance it looks pretty rough um but like if this is ever the best thing to do in everyone we have a problem and mm -hmm. i want to see if that's the case because if we can prove this is bad then so be it like, yeah and he doesn't bought i avoid saying that word i just go to the bakery and say hey i'll get a dozen sesames or like uh yeah how, okay works here, okay yeah. how about a, a good cream teas and locks uh red onion new corp deck there's a um a smoked salmon specific little restaurant near me that I just oh sorry am I talking while you're no, supposed no, to be I'm able just to trying bring to up? think of the name I know but I was going to keep talking anyway I just wanted you to acknowledge that I was harming you um Arctic is tomorrow yeah it's Arctic tomorrow how much is um uh daily quest three oh I shouldn't do it there I should do it here daily quest is three influence let's find out I had a 12 uh okay so <laughs> okay. it's it's a uh, it's a fair bit it's six so in theory we could we'd have to there. drop all the attitude adjustments and the crazy, I'm not going to do that. Let's just. I, I like attitude adjustment here anyway. So, yeah. yeah. David, I've got no idea. That's a you problem. And I don't know why you're bringing it up in chat, frankly. That's rude. Gustavo, I think Bloop is fine. Like, it's mm -hmm. it's the good numbers on it. It's just hard to make a deck that consistently cares about uh, a lot of the separate teams. Like, Program Destruction isn't the best against Anarch or Shaper. Mm -hmm. uh, core damage doesn't matter unless your deck really capitalizes on it. So it is definitely taxing. I just don't think it's the most important. It kind of falls into the same trap that a bunch of the weird buy rights did. Like, all their abilities <clears throat> are good, but it's mm -hmm. hard to leverage those abilities with the rest of your game plan if your game plan is, like, score to seven. Uh, so yeah. maybe a different deck. Uh, so, Mir, I think the plan, the point is to like just get five threes and like 59 cards eight five threes that's that's the kind of density we're going for yeah it's basically to prove a density point that in my calculation hey, hey macaroni how's it going mm -hmm. in my calculation 59 three pointer eight is one of the lowest agendas mm -hmm. per card you put in your deck and it's one of the most accesses the runner needs to win Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, there's inconsistencies here. Your deck is less inconsistent, <laughs> and that's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. But if you generally have like a dirtily late game econ, a late game plan that you're going to turn 25, and you can play hide the agendas, it is frustrating to play against, and it's not the <clears throat> worst. Mm -hmm. I do think if you have a consistent game plan that you're trying to quickly get to, and for us, it's just install buy rights and click for credits, as exciting as it's going to be, it might not be that big of a downside. But yeah, obviously deck sizes are not great. The next jump point, I think, is like a 75, and then you play 30 agenda points, and the density on that is slightly lower but that's definitely not worth pursuing hey it's up <clears throat> we're hurting ourselves to hurt the other player even more it's research uh sorry yep. mind. 
That's a... Uh... Oh, well, Cabanessa is 73. So it, this is definitely World Tree. Wait, this is wait, banned. Wait, what's going on here? Is it banned? And it, yeah, it's banned as of today. What is going on here? Are we... Did we create a casual game? Uh... It's not enforced on JNet, so I think um, I think course, Bam, course. Uh, Hunter uh, just no. Uh, in our hearts, yes. <laughs> uh huh. Do you think I'd get in trouble at Idos if, like, every time there's a live stream of the new game, people are talking like, "Hey, can you have Patrick on stream? Can we like talk to the, you know, the like third mo third most active writer on the game?" Uh, We can talk about not that y'all don't have enough to do. Okay. Can someone do something about this? I can't. Oh, no, I can. Can't I? I don't know. Yeah, but no, like, I probably it, should. Yeah. Are the folks on Null Singles, have they written these up and they haven't gone here? Because these have been here forever. And this is such a cool space for Flavor of the it World is yeah. that isn't coming, getting I'm, used. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send myself a message, actually. That's a good point. Uh, but also, Ginevra is watching the stream. So you can also mention it. But I will make a note. Uh Kentucky. Yeah, so those their quotes, their flavor quotes for certain runners when that feature came out, but then it just didn't come up at the release side. It's obviously like a nice to have. It's not important. Mm -hmm. but I just wanted to ask you if that's a thing because I don't know if it's a JNet thing or a null signal thing or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think like. I, I don't think it's right to say that null signal has like full control over everything to do with. Yeah, definitely. Not. With JNet, like I know that like that's not, uh, what hundred percent integrated relationship, but obviously friendly. I remember Phil chatting <clears throat> with somebody on the stream about brainstorming new quotes <clears throat> that never made onto JNet. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's like a really cool space because it gives you that, like, you know. I'd like to see people, like, kind of submit their own, just like, and then. And I think there's only one for each person. Like, there could easily be a there, pool. There could be multiple, yeah, yeah for sure. And then you just pull one ever, mm -hmm. one out. Yeah, people in GLC oh, cool. have been making new quotes. Oh, Ginevra, that's sick. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Mm -hmm. Back when Gate we released, awesome. Yeah, no, it's like a really fun place to insert flavor because, again, a lot of IDs, too, don't even have flavor text on them because yep. of, uh, you know, Ran, ran out of space. I don't we, even know if corps have flavor text. I get no, they have generally like bylines. Yeah, yeah like taglines. Yeah, like oh, uh, like an ad line or something. Yeah, exactly. Like like op was we made sure that op got flavor text, right? I don't know. Pretty Ooh, sure this is also probably World Tree Islet, and this is good because <laughs> cool. if they need to run, our ability gets strong because the more they run, the more value we get. Mm -hmm. um, now, yeah, that's very interesting. Cool. We, this could counter us really hard mm -hmm. because this is the deck that's most likely to be on <laughs> K2CB Turbine mm -hmm. and everything. So this actually might be the one deck if they can spin up, which we're going <clears> to <throat> give them all the time in the world that mm -hmm. eats this alive mm -hmm. because we are really weak to uh, fixed strength breakers. Like Does they break have this... a quote. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, uh, but they break this for one credit, right? Like mm -hmm. this is the worst case. This hand has more economy than we'd want. We've sprint. I'm going to keep this, even though this is obviously not like explosive. Mm -hmm. And Ravana really doesn't do anything. Uh, we are on a deck that's 59 cards and only eight agendas to hurt people and make them feel bad. Uh, ask Chat GPT for quotes. Nah, that makes me feel bad. Uh, Thanos, I love the new Shadow Elves deck. It may, might be my favorite of like the new of the base decks. Um, just like so many fun, tricksy things you can do with them. Really, really cool. Uh, you oh, built you built it this is bad. you built it i'm just gonna talk to chat you suffer yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'm just gonna like talk uh, about uh this turns off their the world tree this turns off world tree it does if you have it on every single server yeah okay all right anyway hey. hi bounty hunter sax <laughs> uh yeah. yeah, we're just playing a big old list, 59.8, mm -hmm. to see what it looks like. Um, the idea here is that there's only limited economy. Uh, mm -hmm. Eventually runs out. We have some of the most taxing guys in the game. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they can click through it, but the more of that you stack. Now, yep. they are now, just currently, it's up. not the most taxing ice in the game, but yeah. it, ex it exists. It's on. It Actually, looks like ice. You know what? Rezzing Ravana sometimes is correct because it turns on our ability, even though it has no tax because then they pass it. Well, it turns on our ability again if there's another Bioroid somewhere else. Ooh. <laughs> so we have a Ooh. okay Turns out the deck is inconsistent <laughs> Ooh, that's bad so i did the math that we have the same mm -hmm. density of agendas to cards that you would expect in an 18 agenda mm -hmm. point deck 49 so like mm -hmm. we shouldn't be drawing that bad but there's obviously a huge variance when you're playing a 59 card deck yeah uh gustavo's it's summoner wars uh like the online version like you can sign up for free and you always get like a rotating two free decks to play with and I also think that like you can get a good amount of like fun out of that and just like check in every month to see what's the new uh what's the new assortment. I do pay for a subscription because I like the game a lot. It's a fun one to play is asynchronously. I always have like three or four games going at any given time. Um and I've got a couple friends who like to play and we just like it's a kind of a slow game to play in person, 
So making it asynchronous where I yeah. just check in like a few times a day is kind of the perfect way to go. Especially online where there's not a lot of like, all right, well, that's good. Uh, we'll raise that. They can figure out what to do with this. Yeah. Uh, the text bad. isn't totally relevant, but if they ever go through that's one of the things like actually running end the run by roads is a bit of a problem. <clears throat> now, if they don't mm-hmm. go through this, and immediately with two credits, they might not worry that we can score out. But if they don't, if they go through this, we get a free Ravana. Mm-hmm. So they're just going to break one and the run. And that turns off her ability for the turn, which is actually really bad. Yeah. Oh, I can specify it. Not Summoner's War. Summoner's War is another game that people often confuse. It's like a free, it's like a free to play mobile game, I think. But Summoner Wars. Oh, you're right. I have flat that up. Is the yeah, Flat Hat Games uh, like tactical card game. Yeah, Summoner War, it's like one of those free to play. Yeah, mobiles. it's like I think it's a gotcha, gotcha game or something. Yeah. All right, so this is the thing. We just have to keep all gotcha. the servers up. Luckily, gotcha. this is up, so we can. Okay, we just have to ice up everything. Mm-hmm. Honestly, putting an on sale in archives doesn't seem like the worst thing. No, I, I think that's fine. Just ice up everything. Swamp Orcs are looking great. Uh the I've seen the high elves. Like I've seen the playtest of the high elves, and like they are the kind of playstyle that I dislike completely. I'm so not looking forward to them. But the summoner herself is extremely powerful. So, like, I'm just hoping we get other cards in those two deck building symbols that we can, like, put into that deck to make her feel worthwhile. This is so risky. With two clicks left, this could be a fair shot three. Like, this is actually oh, yeah, this kind is, of a this fair is bit of disrespect. Yeah. And we can, yeah, and that becomes a brand. Yeah, okay. So they can click through it. But if that was anything mm-hmm. of the three subs, so now we get a <laughs> Sorry, Gustavo. Res. But glad I caught you. <laughs> So here they can steal Ikawa. We have one in hand. But like our agenda density is so low. The chance mm-hmm. of this com- connecting is so low. They trash yep. an austerity. We have multiple restore in the deck, if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken. Again, we're just trying to grind. Uh, I just want to check that we did do that. Uh, yeah, once yeah, again, if people just want to like toss me an invite to a, a Summoner Wars game uh, on Discord or something, just track me down through GLC. I'd be happy to get some games in. And this is the sort of thing, like we, we resist this for two credits at some point in the game. Like... It's going to be very quickly before our ice mm-hmm. outscales their engine. And again, it's hard for them to make free runs uh, to get the world tree. But if they do get down to turbine, we're in a bad spot. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. Kind of interested to run that Python code. Probably answer some interesting questions about limited decks and mixed agenda suites. Yeah, XRN, right now, um, there's no swaps. There's no switches. It doesn't do four-point agendas or zero-point agendas or negative-point agendas. And you can make it go to six for limited uh, by just hitting a mad dash button. But it's all up on GitHub. I'll share it once the video comes out and you can pull it down. Uh, it's the first time you use GitHub. Like, Ooh, we just, yeah. we just, we restore, just restore that either and... for an NGO or for austerity. But I think it's just mm-hmm. austerity. Like, this is all we're doing. Like, this seems so, like, mm. like so frustrating. Wait on conduit or better, that sort of thing. Yeah, the moment mm. you realize you're up against a 59 card, but it probably comes down slow and build up. Yeah. Um, and then they probably <clears throat> camp the remote server. And mm. maybe they have a way to stop fast advance, but now they only have three clicks a turn. We can restore like for an NGO front. It's not great, but we can do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't draw more ice, but we just click for credits. And then next turn, we can score this from hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, and mainly this agenda suite probably could be playing some two ones mm. so that we don't have to score three agendas. That's mm-hmm. the only downside is we have to score. Architects are wasting time. <laughs> Sign me up. All right, so they have their engine. They have 11 cards. Again, if they're in World Tree, it's really hard to run through this. They're going to need, and again, as soon as they get Buzzsaw into K2, this breaks for one credit. So, like, it is an issue for us. We actually have to go a bit faster. Yeah. But they also now can't really face check because mm-hmm. of Fairchild 3. They're not playing pre shed or what's it called? Cyberdelia. They're in Memory Diamond. Mm-hmm. You can play that or DZ, but I think they want the hand size for some reason. Check for Claude Axis. Uh, currently, they don't have it. Hmm. A lot of these decks aren't running SMC. Actually, no, that might not be true. I'm not sure how common SMC is in the world tree lists because that's generally how they're getting their stuff, but it could be there. Hey, friends. All right, tomorrow will be the game. Yo, Alec, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, Arctex, it's a good It's a good thing Patrick only has a four-day work week. By the way, Patrick is new job, but he only has a four-day work week. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Oh, there's Cleaver. So they have Simon Chip, of course. Import a free one-point somehow. HB has free one-pointers. You just can play the one-pointers. And the Wayland one has rotated a, while, a long time ago. So I think we have to make a stronger mode. Cleaver doesn't deal with this too well, even with the turbine. Mm. I'm going to put this on R&D because that's where the game is right now. And merely they could click through this and we lose that. Actually, uh, putting this on here was correct. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because they're going to trash that this turn. Yeah, we 100% goof that. We care about Super Yeah, a little one. bit. That's not right. Well, actually, now they're not. It seems like they're not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's fine. Yeah, four-day work week was something that was announced <laughs> when I was working in Montreal in video games, and mm-hmm. then like it started this cold war with all companies being like, "What do you mean they have a four-way work week? We want a four-day work week." <laughs> yeah. Okay, so they have it, no. It, it's like a, unions without unions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they don't have cloud access, so I it's guess gonna, we're gonna go for it. 
it's a lot of our money but again as soon as they pass the ravana we get the best ice in the game res for like two credits yeah exactly like we don't need the money to res stuff we're getting free reses just restore it yeah we are going to restore it over and over mm -hmm. again we just yep. need to get another ice here and then we need to click for credits is restore the one that removes from game all the other copies yep. okay yeah. which doesn't matter mm -hmm. it doesn't matter yep <clears throat> But yeah, yeah, okay. They have two simul chips. They're bracing again. They have to get to the mid to late game. So we actually do have to push it a bit. Oh, we do. Okay. Yeah, anymore. we can uh, save some time. And again, we can go pretty low in credits considering. Immediately, we're going to need an agenda, but like mm -hmm. we can go pretty low in credits considering yep. if they pass Just any pass of the dice. One thing we can res a thing for free yeah. or for two credits. The simulation to remove an agenda. Cody? Not Aesop's thing. They have a lot of money. And again, I do think they're going to get Turbine down. We're going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Again, if they're not playing a Turbine deck, how does Anarch deal with this? Again, Anarch does threaten Hippo, which with three restores, mm -hmm. we can maybe do something about it. Okay, well, that's our play. And like, we're not making decisions here. We can also jam an agenda. It's worth knowing that it, next activation command doesn't work well with five threes. Maybe we shouldn't be playing these. It's just inherently a good yeah, card. Yeah, interesting. Do we have, we don't have Seamless in here, I guess. Because that also doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, update the simulation to remove an agenda because we scored. Oh, okay. yeah. oh see, yeah. It's getting harder and harder. Um, hmm. so I think next time we'll double credit and we'll next are, to protect are there this. any like fake one points there are real one pointers there are real one pointers in here no not in here but like Ella Vigao. like there are real one pointers oh, yeah, you, you could yeah, be sorry. playing sorry I meant like yeah if, what can you put in here like uh, Ella Vigao, easy. like an echo chamber or easy. something but... no it's for influence mm -hmm. it's really hard yeah okay so we just hit this credit that like this is our <laughs> game plan so now mm -hmm. they can't click through the biroids they all are plus two strength and we have enough credits next turn to score out from hand mm-hmm that puts us we'll be at zero. Point. Yeah, we'll be at zero. Mm -hmm. We don't have to score next hand. They're in 29. <laughs> They're not running, but like that's the sort of thing. It's against our ability. You generally don't want to. Like it gives us four credits of value every turn. Mm -hmm. Again, that thing is though, if you do run, you want to run more than once. Yes. The question is, is for us to figure out where to res. I do think at mm -hmm. some point we want to get crazy on R&D because they're running Maker's Eye. That seems to be where they're going to win. It also deals with, not that they can't trash it, but it deals with uh, World Tree. It deals with a lot of stuff. I don't honestly know if we score out next turn. No, I don't want to go down to zero because that kind of turns off our ability in, yeah. a, in an annoying way. I think if anything, we might want to restore uh, NGO. Mm. Wait, so we, so we would pop that. Clot. Oh, they have a clot now. So all right, we have to figure out how to get around clot. So do, you, well, okay, well, yeah, they have so many sandwich chips that. So we need to get this on a table. Mm -hmm. So like, I do think we just score this in a remote server with magnet brawn because mm -hmm. they're not pulling breakers. They have three sandwich chip. And we we score it the normal way. Yeah. Or we like we bait the clot and then leave it. I think we bait the clot and leave it. Like mm -hmm. I think we pop the clot, install advance. They wait till mm -hmm. we get the fourth advancement and then we next. The problem is mm -hmm. we don't have credits there, so I think we just hit this for a turn. Yep. And I think we. They genuinely restore out a NGO front. Because it's technically an economy play. Hmm. Not great, actually. I thought we could get a second. Pretty terrible, that. actually. <laughs> I, I, like that, that, was, that was a like that was a waste to both restore and uh yeah, well, you know what? Never mind. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. Uh good night. Uh Gustavo. <laughs> yeah, thanks Gustavo. for stopping by. Thanks for dropping by. by. Jesus, man. I mean, something that isn't a vulnerability for you to work off your Glacier style, even a single 2-1 really weakens your Agenda Suite intuitively, not run the numbers. It doesn't actually really uh, weaken the Agenda Suite. <laughs> yeah, Thanos. Let's let's really let him have it here. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad restore play. Mm -hmm. Let's let's be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we can push them into a remote server. So they only have three clicks. Uh, Brawn Magnet forces two kinds of breakers. Cleaver doesn't deal with the Brawn really well. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to force them out. Um, I think we have to do it. Mm-hmm. We have to only hit the bottom. In theory, you could hit top and bottom, but then we don't to have enough To make it clicks. more difficult for them to click, but I think that's the play because then we can yeah. just play next, which negates clicking anyway. Yeah, action. I'm just going to keep asking for action at weird spots. Fair. Got it, Jed. Thanks for coming in. Hey, thanks for coming by. We just started UK Traders. Offbeat, how's it going? What does that mean? UK Traders. Good luck. Always thank you. Advance. <laughs> In theory, could be an hell of a gal, but like, whatever. Thinking, not yet. <laughs> We're gonna wait. I think. I think he, they've known. They. They've known. Keep going. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. They're playing around four Ts. I like that. So clots down. So we're gonna have to purge. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we continue <clears throat> to invest on this. I think we just next and click for credit. Yes, we're gonna have to res this for three and then still three. One hundred percent. Next and click for credit. Good luck. Always a pleasure. Hey, cheers. So that hits a buzzsaw. 
So because they trash, that's mm -hmm. really smart. Mm. So now they can actually run their moats over. They don't need to cleaver through a big strength brand. But like, I think this is a really bad matchup because <laughs> they have all the breaker suite. They're going to get the K2 CP turbine. They have clot and all the breaker suite. So like not mm. looking good mm -hmm. for us, us here. So I'm going to do next. Yep. And it's either click for credit or put a defensive upgrade on server one. <laughs> now, also, if this was an Akawa, it changes everything. Mm hmm. We actually, if we were really then playing around the 4-2, which I don't think we did, we could have clicked this one more time. And so they have three, three clicks. Mm -hmm. So it's either click for credit or put an upgrade. I think we need money. I think I think the credit, yeah. yeah. I don't think the upgrade is going to change their decision too much. I think much. it might. Well, mm -hmm. with 27 credits, I don't know. <clears throat> like, only 12 influence. They haven't mm -hmm. seen any. But yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be rough here. And that's the GFI, right? Like, that's its own defensive upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Come yeah. on. Basically, it's basically, yeah. So, like, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I really hate Architects tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe a good counter, but I'm like, horizontal deck, make a big rig shape a really sad, solid verticality deck. May have the same effect on average versus your econ. Okay. So now we, we go. Now we've lost. We've lost the game. Or have we? Yeah, 100%. Or. So why, we don't Why are they the even it? overclocking? I feel like that's not necessary. because well, but... this is expensive. I guess so, but. I think here we concede. I, well, I think we let them steal it and then we concede. Yeah, yeah, we for, can steal the next turn. But like at this point, we've lost. Yeah. Uh, this is the thing that beats Big Ice. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's very popular. I don't know if these Islet decks are catching on, but like this is exactly what keeps the sort of uh, Big Ice in check. Because this is admittedly mm -hmm. kind of expensive. But now they run everything uh, super cheaply. So we'll raise a brand on R&D. Mm -hmm. And they can get a food. They still need two more accesses. Unfortunately, we played our restore like an absolute monkey, so mm, that's not good mm. for us. But it's a food. They played around Ikawa pretty well. Mm. All right, and they still have a lot of money. That's a defensive upgrade we could have wanted. What do we do here? Do we fold? Still got spin. We got spin. We got the spin. I don't think we ice up the spin. Immediately forcing him to res is good. Uh... Mm. <laughs> it's about the only deck shaper has left, eh? Uh, this may be. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell. I think people are going to figure something out. But, like, for what it's worth, because we're a slow deck, they're playing World Tree without playing World Tree. Like, they're just playing the sort of control shaper mm -hmm. people hate playing against. And again, if you don't go fast enough, this is the threat in the modern meta, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they do break all your money for credit, for all your credit ice for pennies. Like, we're playing the best ice in the format. One credit, right? Mm -hmm. Like, Anarch deals with this for what? Six? One. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a difference. Just put that in the server and we gotta keep drawing. We need mm. to get other stuff. Like we have to discard agendas here. We have no money though. That's really bad. Smoke sells wheels. Oh yeah, smoke is probably pretty reasonable, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> smoke has at least three point two five wheels. Smoke never had a boat. Never needed a boat. No, smoke competitively played boat. Oh damn. Yeah. Shit. People were holding on, but oh, they ended up playing boat. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. And the biggest issue though is like the other smoke console is Onicom, which is good, but mm -hmm. like this the consoles aren't amazing. All right, well, I guess we put that back. So here, we get the agenda back in, probably. I don't think there's a good reason to check yeah. that. And then do we get a restore? It's probably, probably the, the restore most flexible. Better, from, better than the AFCA. Yeah. yeah, which they can trash. Proud to say I never played a smoke and uh, Boke and smoke. <laughs> Boke, Boke and smoke. Bo yeah, yeah, we'll figure it out eventually. It's 1045. We don't need to speak, right? Okay, so again, mm. they trash everything for free. They run the server. Six strength is still like, okay. They break this for four if they want. This they break for one. Like our remote server doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So we just have to stack more and more ice on it. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, uh, the drafter is a problem they'd have to deal with, mm -hmm. as cool as that is. But as soon as we install that, we don't have a turn. Mm -hmm. But we have to install that. Again, no point installing the Eli, broken for one. Um, overwrite the magnet? Oh, yeah, you're totally right. Cool. That just gives them bath credits, though. Mm -hmm. So like they're happy about it. The shame is not called smoke on the water. That's what the uh, bulk smokes were called. Oh, they have double cyber deal. Okay, so now they actually make money. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we concede here. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I, I don't think we. Have yeah, that that's that's it. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna throw this one. <clears throat> Get back to work, Patrick. Damn it, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> guys! My lead. He's watching the stream. Okay, we can just push this out, out a bit, but like, yeah, at this point, even mm -hmm. a disastrous face check into the drafter doesn't do mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. I don't know where their win con is, but this is also like a really big lesson. If you're not constantly enacting your win condition, they can't afford to install all these nonsense cards that don't do anything. Yeah, John and I are trying to figure out how to gradually get people really interested in, in Netrunner at Eidos. It should be easy. Oh, I mean, my plan is like we just 
look really good playing it at lunch like sexy like sexy yeah, yeah. and be like oh well, i want to know those guys have you ever walked into like a place with your own backlight oh that's pretty good yeah, yeah. just like hanging it's up, a yeah. huge deal if you have a backlight 100 percent. yeah yeah uh-huh but not black light because that makes people think a pervert don't yeah do that 100 percent. john does keep john has been wearing his Metropole Grey t-shirt. Yeah, that's and so maybe sick. half of every team's meeting oh, I've been in so with him. so cool, man. Yeah, really. Appreciate it. At, John, have people been asking where that shirt is from? What the heck is that? No, they all know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now the thing is, like, this is not a threat because mm-hmm. they have clot. So next turn, we have to push the, like, this. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll put that R&D again. We, we probably should concede here. This is not... Yeah, uh, really programming. Um, I should wear my Metropole Grid shirt on Monday, finally, because I think like so far John's the one who's been wearing his. And he was hoping that like he would look. I think he keeps hoping uh, that I'm going to like, oh, no, we accidentally mentioned the swag that yeah. doesn't exist. Cody asks their swag. Where's the storefront link? We have no storefront. We've been hitting getting messages on the Internet from like people trying to be like, oh, sell. we can sell your merch. And I, I don't know if they're scams or not. <laughs> Uh, so this they break for free with with Mayfly Drafter, um, mm-hmm. but it was stuff that I gave out at Worlds um, because mm-hmm. I don't have a warehouse and it's easy when it's in person. <laughs> Bait the claw with NGO, yeah, that's our plan next turn. I just don't think we're gonna have a next turn. Yeah, like we need a Gloomhaven room. It's time to start selling <laughs> that merch. Shoes. We've been begging for odd beans. I know everyone's <laughs> yeah. been begging for the odd beans mug, and I have mm-hmm. no idea how to make that look reasonable. Mm-hmm. The artist that I nearly commissioned to do an alt art for the Montreal Meta. I think she'd have a great time making a yeah. Metropole Grid t-shirt, actually. And a few people be like, is Andre real or is he an AI designed to be extra handsome? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And like an AI, it was just pulling information yeah, that yeah, already yeah, existed. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, this looks kind of like Patrick. Yo, real talk. So I was getting frustrated yeah. with the math issue I was running into. So I just asked ChatGPT how to calculate it. And it confidently gave me the wrong answer. Yeah, yeah. And so then I was like, hey, man that ain't it mm-hmm. like that's not correct it's like and it said sorry let me try that again and just <laughs> tried to solve the question in a different way mm-hmm. which was also wrong and i was like hey that also isn't right and like i know it's not right that i know GPT it's not a math thing. is it's still scary because of what it re- represents but it's also so much dumber than i think anyone really realizes but that's the problem is like yeah. it doesn't say hey i'm not sure but maybe it says it this like, is confident. the truth yeah. and i a, 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 so a friend bad. of mine has been messing with it a lot he's in like it he's trying to branch out into various different types of programming and he's been like asking it questions and like, he's like, hey, can you tell me what Al Pacino thinks of this? And it, I, I know it says, but it's like, it's a thing he knows. Like Al Pacino is quoted as this. Yeah, yeah, and the, and ChatGPT returns a quote that's like 75% the real quote. And then it just, just makes uh, it, like, it just freestyles know. the yeah, end of the yeah, quote. Yeah. Like why? You had the quote right there, but it like, it has to make itself unique. And it like, ChatGPT has the brain of like a college students writing an essay that they don't know anything about yeah and they're just like adding bullshit like nouns and adjectives to, to it to make to fill in the word count to make themselves seem smarter uh we concede so like we yeah. deserve each other here right like this is the late mm-hmm. game i'm gonna crush your ice deck which is probably not representative <laughs> standard netrunner as much as mm-hmm. this deck can play flexible and we're the late game all we have is club crushing ice glacier netrunner so like Honestly, this is poetic, but I don't know if this is accurate for either side of the table. So I don't know if this matchup is representative. Not that this yeah. is fun or exciting. Hang on. We do have to point out that Peter is anti-Socrates here. <clears throat> hey, I'm not sure. That's what Socrates said. Yeah. And like Peter's like, I don't think Socrates is that smart. I'm like, Socrates maybe didn't exist. So how about that? Hey, thanks for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Peter. I didn't mean to go so hard against you. It's just I'm really sensitive about Socrates. We use ChatGPT write first drafts of certain training documentation work. There's a lot of good uses for it, for yeah. sure. Like I'm not saying that there's it shouldn't mm-hmm. exist. It's just I really don't like that it it speaks confidently <laughs> without knowing anything. Not that I've never done that. One of my favorite book trilogies, by the way, features Socrates as like a special guest character. Uh, that's the Thessaly trilogy by close friend of the show, uh, Joe Walton. Close friend of the show? That's yeah. What we, that's our, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll take that endorsement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hugo and Nebula award winning author, Joe Walton. Joe Walton. And fan close personal friend of yeah. me, myself, and the show. Yeah. Pat's not joking. <laughs> he sounds like he's joking. He's not. Yeah. I've never joked once in my life. People think I do, but I'm just dumb. Patrick showing what a four day work week does to people. <laughs> yeah. You know, fight against the Capitol or whatever. I don't know. Sometimes I think I should be plugging things more on the show, but it's not like I do much, but I have friends who do things. <laughs> okay, I you got know? the good news is the bad news. What's that? Good news? 
Bad news is Buzzsaw. Okay. Like Buzzsaw is going to be the problem. Buzzsaw Turbine is going to be um, a thing here. Luckily, we're slow, and we they are going to be forced <laughs> to produce other breakers. Now, admittedly, mm-hmm. the uh, kit can code gate the first one, then maybe click through the back one. Yeah, but we've got enough code gates that we can put them at the end. We have a fair few code gates. Like, we have almost all the fair children. Uh, we don't have 1.0s, but we have a lot of 3s mm-hmm. and 2s. We have Ravanas, which, like, those all do well. And I don't know whether uh, Kit's going to be playing, uh, what's it called? The Turbine. The Turbine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so here we probably just start with a sprint. Like, whatever. Okay, so oh, okay. we don't That's need this. Money, we don't but... need that. Mm-hmm. That is way more money than we want. <clears throat> so we'll put that on R&D. Again, the face check is fine. Mm-hmm. Actually, in theory, we want that outermost. Nah, it's fine. I think R&D is. It's just where the game okay, is right yeah. now. Now, melee running turn one here is really easy. You're not yourself when you're hungry, John. Will you, A and I, Netrunner Bob, be less confident when it ever gets around to being completed? Yo, I have put a fair bit of time into it, and I never, like, get around to finishing mm-hmm. that. That's obvious. Right now, the state machine works. I think the fact that I got my other math stuff on GitHub makes me mm-hmm. more excited to build a portfolio and show <laughs> it publicly. So I think there's some push, uh, some, like, real good reason to do that. Mm-hmm. And it also lets me, like, remember how much I write, like, writing code. So I, I don't think we're too far away, but, like, yeah, we're, we have the hard part still to do. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's scary. Is everyone preparing for a late game that exists? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we'll get rid of the agenda. That's mm-hmm. fine. So we now Fair. want to build a remote server. So, so that's so... going to go on the outside. So we have to not put Technically, it Technically, yeah, the but it's really ugly on the inside. It just Yeah, but yeah, I don't you're, care. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're totally right. Because like, also, you can res it when it's on the outside. And yes, it won't do anything. But it does res a thing later on. Yeah. So. Ooh, leech. That's good. So now HQ pressure matters. Don't hit the, uh, mm-hmm. the thing that we care about. Uh, please don't. Okay, that's bad. That was a reason to ice up HQ. We should have HQ ice. Oh no, we weren't planning to ice HQ. <clears throat> okay. Um. Uh, uh. That's fine. They can't face check into that. The thing is, like, people face check into drafters, right? Because mm-hmm. it's a byroid, right? Everyone expects it yeah, to fair. be a, a byroid. Okay, so we have a play next turn. So we restore advance and we put Ravana on side. Mm-hmm. Maybe this doesn't do too much, but it might be a click tax, and they're gonna have fewer clicks if we hit the austerity. If you really want a Snickers bar, what a weird craving. I honestly never really got into chocolate bars. Um, you said some weird things about candy today uh, candy before the guy. stream. And like, it, yeah, it's so strange. Pantograph, that's cool. That's not the endurance. I wonder if this, uh, this is a startup deck. Uh, currently looking like it. Yeah. There's a lot of good kit in startup. Okay, so let's force an issue. So if we do this, we'll have uh, 10 credits. Yeah, let's just do it. What's it takes a couple turns. What's the harm? Yeah, they don't have breakers just yet. All right, so three clicks of the turn. Again, if this stays for too long, we can maybe score out. I do think we might need more <laughs> defensive stuff. Like maybe we need Biovolves. Uh, Embolus doesn't... It mm. kind of makes sense, actually. Embolus would be good if we got it rolling. John, as a writer, I know that every time someone has a weird craving or an unusual craving, it is like a sim a signal to the, to the viewer yeah. that you are watching a netrunner stream starring your friends andre and patrick and you're pregnant congratulations congrats man yeah did you throw up this morning actually don't tell that don't don't tell us that that okay so we want to play we definitely hit this once so they're not they're just you know sitting back which Mm -hmm. makes sense as much as their turns are now uh three clicks ours are kind of three clicks uh kind of two Mm -hmm. clicks so we want to get ice up again the drafter now if we get the ravana outside is pretty good Mm -hmm. fairchild three is taxing until again they drop the inevitable uh what's it called I, I do like Snickers as just like a thing that has food that will fill up my stomach. And it's like just a reliable thing to get at a depener. If I just need, <laughs> I am pregante. I've been learning Spanish. That's how I know that. Smartware. Is it in French? I think it's French or is it Spanish where like the word that people think embarrassed is actually pregnant. Embarrassé. Well, yeah. embarrassé is like embraced. I think right? it might or, be a different well, you know, language. Maybe it's Italian. I don't mm-hmm. know. I know there's one language where the mm-hmm. word people think embarrassed is actually Spanish. It's, it's Spanish. <laughs> Diogene, I didn't know you spoke Spanish. And I saw one of your comments in Spanish on RNDB. I'm like, right, check that out. That's really cool. All right, Cleaver's down. So uh, that doesn't do and anything on sad. this board state, but it will be good eventually. Mm-hmm. And next turn we can score out. Let's just, again, do the thing that we <clears> do. And you see how they don't run, right? Mm-hmm. Like, as exciting as that is, maybe we should be playing um, uh, Daily Quest. <laughs> but again, we're 59 cards. We probably shouldn't be. Yeah. That should be, let's be honest. Yeah, I've got quite, so. Netrunner Worlds is in Barcelona this year. Mm-hmm. I have a Spanish friend, humble brag, who's been helping me learn uh, Spanish. Like I've been mostly doing like Duolingo, other things, and then she will like correct things, or I'll, I'll text her or send a voice message. And she thinks I should be doing like the Barcelona accent, like sure. like the S's become a th kind of thing, like yeah. a b- Barcelona. Oh, I feel like I'd be such an asshole. Oh, this is cool. Yep. Yeah, okay. So they're charging. They have no clicks left. Unfortunately, that's like an ugly Ravana. 
but I mean, if you, re- if you resin, ice. you get the yeah. Yeah, I think do it. But I don't know if we cheap res mm. this. I think we res something else. Fire all, yeah, makes sense. Mm-hmm. So we have to do some math here because they have to trash this. Mm-hmm. It costs three. If they have to get through the on-sell, that's going to cost them five credits, which means they can't trash the austerity. So we just res it. Mm-hmm. They might jack out here. That's the only downside. But at least now this remote server is genuine. There's no way they should continue. Did I do the math wrong? It's two, three, four, five. And so they're credit short. Hmm. I don't, I think they're, I think there might be goofing. Sorry, my face is covering this. They have a buzzsaw. That I mean, I, yeah, I, 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 oh, leech, 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 oh, leech, leech is going to help. Leech, yeah. Leech, 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 leech. yeah, leech is a card. I mean, also, but, but going by the cards, I think that they're just a, a new player as well. Like just having, I mean, yes, they did have but exactly like, enough hey, to, to fix strength, break a sweet. It's getting us again. They're doing it. They're believing. Yeah. All right, let's start <laughs> with the attitude. So we can shuffle two agendas away again. That's money. And then we can just continue to do this. Like we, I think it make me lose voice of throats conjugation, Mexican Spanish all the way. Is that something that's unique? See, I'm going to have to ask my Mexican friend, humble brag it. What, what that means. <laughs> All right, so they have on top of their deck mm-hmm. the buzzsaw. Buzzsaw scales well enough to Fairchild. We're going to have to ice this up soon. And obviously, we do this. We're going to get this just on archives. Eventually, this is broken for three credits. But again, their economy is tied to the distributors. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we just, again, slow as molasses with no proactive plays. This is the worst. Mm-hmm. We are going to delete this deck. He, he, here, here's what I'm. Here's something I'm, I'm worried about. <clears throat> like I said, looking at this person's deck, probably like a relatively new player or, the, or just a startup deck. I don't know. But if they're a new player and they're facing this deck, they're gonna hate it. Netrunner is not a fun game. Yeah, now. I feel bad. Yeah, like about you meant to, you know. We're maybe. supposed to be the ambassadors. So, well, you're supposed to be the ambassador. I think we just credit credit. Like we're not doing anything. We don't. Well, we should draw once. Maybe we don't have an agenda. Mm-hmm. If they go for this now, though, right? Like that's fine. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And this is cool though. Like, admittedly, this late game econ packages are the exact sort of things you need against this. Like, there's mm. no more Rizeki. This is the Rizeki you get. Oh, they're checking HQ. I like that a fair bit. So mm. this Fairchild 3 is broken for two credits, but we're still gonna res it. Yeah. And, then the drafter, yeah. They're also oh, running actually, last click a lot against spiroids, which is Yeah, but risky. they had to. Yeah. Our ice is so bad into this breaker suite. <laughs> Our ice is so <laughs> bad. Like echelon breaking drafter for one. And the thing is like this is one of the biggest <clears throat> learnings is we are going so slowly mm-hmm. that they can afford to set this up. Yeah, they can just do shaper things and set not up. Not even shaper at, stuff. Like this well, is well, like, I know it's not entirely, but like, you know, a shaper thing is like have a rig that is inevitable and unstoppable and they're just getting there and we're kind of letting it happen. Yeah. And so I think they're judging that the chance of stealing an agenda on HQ is higher than running mm-hmm. your most of brand. That's <clears throat> probably right. Like this is actually really cheap. Okay, so I think we just credit credit. I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know what to say. We're going to lose. Uh, we will concede. Ooh. And that, I think, if they don't like this, makes you so happy when this deck concedes. But this is two in a row, and they're going to have K2P, say, K2CP. They're going to have it. I don't think they do. No, 100% they do. There's no way that you're playing Buzzsaw. No, I, I, I think they without K2CP. Like, we've only seen Gateway and System Update. I, I literally think this is this is a deck built from not including Borealis cards. You might be right, but maybe. The, I'm, I may be crazy. I don't know. Do you think Thule could work not as a core damage deck, but as go wide resource tax deck? Uh, no, because then they could just take core damage. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe your opponent doesn't know, so they respect the core damage. But, like, inherently, if the core damage doesn't matter, then you don't have a tax. And it's up to your opponent to figure it out. I do think if you want to go wide, like, it's really hard not to play Asa because of fully operational. And they can go wide even better. So I would be super surprised if it turns out to be better than anything else you can do. Let's so is once. the plan here? We're just drawing for a five three, and then we uh... yeah okay. That's how you play All this, right. and then we have to do that three more, two more times. We've made it's it's okay to concede because we feel like we're not, we're. I think I feel like it's okay to concede. But do you I... know what the worst part is? It's because our agenda density is so low, and they're taking so few accesses. The amount yeah. of time before they actually produce enough accesses mm-hmm, for it to mm-hmm. matter is so high. Yeah, we have to be interacting with each other more because, as Diogene said earlier, that's the only interesting thing about this stream today uh so oh it's a code gate yeah that's yeah pretty bad. uh we can res drafter no we can talk about that uh that canadian tv show we were talking about it over dinner i don't know what that one is though it's true only i know that maddie did yeah we can we can like replace with maddie for a little while okay i'm out okay we're done <laughs> all right people sorry for everything Don't do this. 
John, I'll message you privately because I think if I start it, then it's going to be the whole rest of the stream. And I, I think we're conceding because like we've kind of made a intentionally boring deck, right? Like that's it. Like a deck where not much is going to happen. Yeah, it's going to be really and boring. It's kind of bad for everyone involved. <laughs> <clears throat> so not only is it really boring, but understanding what our win condition is, is like very, very difficult, right? Mm -hmm. Like we need to draw an agenda. We have to score it out, which means we need five credits at a minimum, which is going to be, again, if we're hitting this every turn, another four turns. And then once we score that out, we're not even halfway mm -hmm. where because we built a really bad deck, we have to do that twice more on top of it. So this game is going to grind on so long. And unfortunately for us, obviously, they have the fixed strength breaker suite, probably turbine, and they actually have unlimited economy which is mm -hmm. kind of rare in the format. There's mm -hmm. very few decks that have unlimited economy and they do. Yep. The fact that they also have Leech and the Breaker Suite, maybe they're not on Turbine. Maybe they're not. Maybe Leech is enough. Like yeah. we're just going to be in a really bad spot regardless. Uh, the only way out from here is having enough money that we actually can jam out and mm -hmm. force on the table as opposed to being like, we're going to score off Austerity, which is probably wrong. So can you stay hovered over Austerity for a second? Yeah. I just want to point out, it's a card that I like looking at the art. I've always had a weird perspective, uh, like confused perspective of this. I thought it was like a much further back image and the kind of like the mottling of the floor was like a crowd of people, like a dense crowd of people. Yeah, I can see how you see But that. when I see it like here, you oh, see it's, it's very, very clearly like we see a person yeah. and we see a person scaled uh, shops or something. Like those shops are two and a half stories tall. <laughs> Andre solved a math problem. The crowd was wrapped with attention. <laughs> now we're playing Netrunner and the crowd wants more math. Oh dear, you, you and me both, huh? Hey, mm -hmm. cat, how's it going? It's yeah. kind of okay. Don't do this. Yeah. Smart ways the econ that kid you concede. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But no, this is the nail into mm. the coffin that already was. Uh, we were already inside. MCAP is so fun. I like in bad mirror morph deck they used it before. This card is so fun in mirror morph. It's actually like, <clears throat> man, I wish we played more mirror morph. Mm. It's really good. No, fails hard to pinhole for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, we'll talk about math. Okay, we have time. What are we? We have an an hour left. I mean, we don't have quite an hour. Left. Yeah, we do. Well, it, well, it's nearly 11. I'd say we have half an hour. left. Yeah. Okay. So let's do something entirely Mirror different. Uh, or runner. <laughs> Just do a runner thing. Yeah. What can we do? We can net deck. Building takes maybe a bit more time than we have. If someone has a good idea of what we want to build into, mm -hmm. we can. Uh, I don't know if Joe's around. Building, playing Joe's um, corp list is kind of on my uh, to-do. Have you seen this thing? I didn't understand it until I understood it. And then once I understood it, I was like, wait, this is really The Nightmare cool. on Archive Street. So just because <clears throat> a deck that never breaks an ice, that's really hard to do. Well, it's not really hard to do. It's really hard to win. Right? And I, I don't know. I don't like always those those uh Okay, sort of... so Hangeki? Yeah, right? I can't remember what Hangeki Me does. Me neither. Right. So check this out. Okay, so Operation Play of the Runner Trash Corp card is one of the reply reprisals. One of your install cards, the runner may access that card if they do remove this operation from the game. Otherwise, add this to your agenda, to your area, to the runner square areas and agenda worth negative one agenda points. So, it's one of those cards that is just a fake agenda for the runner's side. Yeah, and you can force them to maybe access what uh, nightmare archive, I guess, every time. They don't have clicks. They don't have. It's your turn. They don't have clicks. Huh. It can be a Hendrick. They just take core damage for two. If they don't have clicks, if, an agenda. Like you can it's, play. It's just a core damage. It's well, just I mean, if the they core steal damage. It, but yeah, it's just a core damage. So it's either do you want to take negative <clears throat> points or core damage? And like, mm -hmm. obviously, it's 2023. We're playing three stock buyback. <laughs> That's how it works. Mm -hmm. P into AOT into Thule. <laughs> <laughs> You're totally right. Yeah, it's one of those nights, isn't it? Yeah, it's one of those nights. Um, but like, this seems really interesting. How to play this to figure out what the tempo is, is actually mm -hmm. really interesting. There's not a lot of ice, but mm -hmm. you are trying to tempo out. We have two bloops, but like only three pulses. Like we're mm -hmm. not on waves, which you see waves more often than not. But this yeah. has a genuinely good text on it. I just want to point or core damage rings a bell. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and then we have like the nightmare archives. So like they're gonna go negative points, and then then it's either a grindy game that we push our remote server. We have again Giordano because it's mm -hmm. 2023. Small agendas are all the rage, mm -hmm. and we can actually score on a remote. Hmm. Seems cool. Hmm. You gotta go fast. Okay, we're gonna play as fast as we can. Yeah. Um, uh, Eric shared a really cool uh, anecdote where one of the plays that uh, Joe did at an event is he installed Vitruvius and Hangeki did and then uh, I think Eric took the negative one points and then he just scored out of Vitruvius mm -hmm. next turn because you assume it's a trap you're like yeah, I'm not yeah. running that but like yeah. this seems kind of fun this seems one of the cooler through lists I've seen and um, I do think the interaction with Hangeki is like incredibly uh, like it feels unfair I don't know if it's the best thing to do but it mm -hmm. feels so unfair yeah, so, so so Ikawa project. Eric is... conceded after that. I didn't know that. <clears throat> That's wild. 
Okay, sorry. Yeah, I would be so mad, Rohit. Yeah. Yeah. Are we being too noisy for your neighbors, you think? No, probably not. All right. I think they like the stream anyway. Huge fan. Yeah. I forgot that he said on Jeff's video. I didn't realize he conceded after that. Mm -hmm. I thought he just like was tilted as tilted as so many one would be for that. Eric tells the story better than me. Oh, for sure. I have no doubt he uh puts his, his some excitement, some stink into that story. <laughs> okay. Okay. Negative agenda points. Again, it's worth noting that at other points in the game, there were like cards that allowed you to forfeit agendas from your own square area willingly. So that actually, you know, impacts mm. that. And they were like really niche. Uh, they data only... dealer art artist colony those colony, are the two yeah. mm -hmm. and those actually were like someone meta cards when sports metal they seriously changer. were yeah like, absolutely yeah it was a thing friend is having way too much fun playing the soul mirror deck in our meta i might stop going to the meetup <laughs> <laughs> for what it's worth like mm -hmm. you can tech into it you can just play a single caldera and find it and mm -hmm. um caldera kind of tears a lot of this apart slot more stargates yeah stargate will do it mm -hmm. it's hard to do burst access but like just trashing enough cards works um so who knows people, i had 12 agendas last time for six points yeah <clears throat> they play stock buyback for three thousand. people are avoiding this because they know what we're playing uh yeah we shouldn't have put in the title yeah it's weird negative agenda points were always like so news team was like a thing mm -hmm. some players put in their decks yeah and a lot of times i would think it was not the right thing to put in the deck because it didn't change how many accesses you need to win in most of the circumstances mm -hmm. not always but most of them so like it just is a fun card. Negative agenda points is a good idea. But now suddenly, and I think people are realizing how strong stock buyback is, and especially because it solves an issue for a deck that doesn't have a lot of economy. Um, it's really catching on. Zaya could be tag me. That's interesting because we core damage we care about. Oh, one man ticket. I love it. Core damage matters more for ontological mm. than it does hand size. This hand's not great. We yeah. have to make sure we don't get diversion though. Yeah, I mm, Yeah, I'm gonna mulligan. Yeah, that's fine. Yuck. Two bloops. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> bloop, bloop. I played Stargate and Infinite Imp Imp did a win by decking him. Yeah, Infinite Imp is really good. I do think Freedom has a lot of legs. Sorry, I just need to fix this. Bloop. Okay, so we have two bloops. It's our only harmonic besides Pulse. So mm -hmm. how do we do this? But one over HQ for sure. Yeah. It just looks like ice. That's what's important. Do we ever do Hendrik Rashida? I feel like that might be the play. Uh, Same server. Sure. Because this kind of looks like a Hendrik and then some bad one-pointer. I guess so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think worst case is jailbreak, uh, but then they could, in theory, hit two cards. Agendas, maybe. We're running a fair more agendas than you might expect. We're mm -hmm. on, again, we'll put it in the, into the simulation, it, 11. And, and it's a bit of a weird uh, spread, right? Yeah, there's yeah. some three tiers. <clears throat> we have three Vitruviuses and three Ontologicals. Like, mm -hmm. you can lose in three Axes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the negative points really have to start kicking in. As soon as they steal one negative point, they need, uh, not always, they can still win on three Axes. Mm -hmm. Gamble, they're in. Again, this is worth a credit for Zaya. And you don't want to run last click. Oh, that's so bad. And they're paying around it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> this matchup probably going to go badly for you. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, it will. Maybe. Hey. That's that's, that's a really bad to... start. Yeah. Are we on Luminal? Yeah. Of yeah, we're on Luminal. So we actually have a lot of four twos. Okay, good card draw. So I got the credit. Going to draw five, bottom one. And from there. Yeah, we have Pizza Field. Pizza Field should scale <laughs> well. But again, it depends mm -hmm. on how many one pointers <clears throat> we can give. Because if they just steal two pointers, it's over pretty quick. What are you worried about face checking into? Like, I don't think on five credits you're worried about a lot. No. Like, Fairchild no. three on six for sure. Mm -hmm. Give me a Hangeki. Oh, sick. Yep. Sick. Cool. Okay. So uh, we're going to rush. Ice up R&D. Put this in server one. Mm -hmm. And then do we Hangeki? I don't think so. I think we need to score this one out. Mm. I think it's like no matter what happens. Because we can just Hangeki the Hendrick. That would be way safer. But no, they, they know the Hendrick is, is an upgrade. Yeah, so? So why wouldn't they just access it? Because if they access it, they can't lose a click, so they take core damage. Oh, right. Well, I mean, but that also, we have to pay for that. Oh, this only fires the corp trash to card? I didn't realize the that. The runner trash. Oh, interesting. I didn't okay. realize this was a reprisal. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes this so much more difficult. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in theory, you can just pay two, and they hit the Hendrick, and they mm -hmm. take core. Like, true, there's nothing true. around it. I think if they steal this, we're okay. Um, I think we can just go something like this. Again, we want to give them a lot of agendas, and if they run this, it depends on the order they access it. They know this is the upgrade, obviously. So mm. you generally want to access the Hendrix last, because if you lose all your clicks to the Hendrix, then the Hyperloop connects. So in theory, you can spend two clicks, go the other order. But it's still really hard, and they have a lot of cards in hand. Uh, they played one gamble, we're assuming bravados, dirty laundries, mm -hmm. and it is two to trash. 
Yeah, I didn't realize that was a reprisal. I had no idea. I guess, yeah, everyone has reprisals. Yes, yeah, so, so like I, I guess they like everyone got reprisals in what's the African cycle? Katara. Katara, except for Jinteki. So I guess they just like shifted that over to Rain and Reverie, right? I didn't realize that was Rain and Reverie either. Yeah. Uh, super cool. Mm-hmm. What is the other one that has like a human kind of floating in the blue void? Because that's a card I get confused with this. It's an advanceable trap. It has like a science name. Mm-hmm. Oh, is that like the um allele? No, not re- a real suppression. There's like a trap that when you access it, you pay three to shuffle card into their deck. Hmm. And it has this like sort of cyberspace blue floating. Neurostasis. Neurostasis. That's the one. I confused these two when I first saw the list. Because hmm. Neurostasis is like either they, they access a card or Amin is down. Okay. That's fine. They have a tag. We don't have punishment. Our code gates. So our pulses actually, they break <clears> for two. We lose one. Hmm. And I don't have the click of the tag. Again, some Thules are trying to end the line you. Mm-hmm. Concerto. They got a rogue trading with Concerto. That's so rough. <laughs> That's funny. Now they're accessing last click, which is kind of scary. Like, I don't know if you mm-hmm. need to do that, but they're drawing into a <clears throat> hero cost rogue trading. Uh, they're flowing the tag. Yeah, we can't res this, but it doesn't matter. So, no. Yeah. Uh, we're going to trash the class act, right? Honestly, I don't know, man. Really? Yeah. I maybe. think I think trash it for sure. Maybe. That's, that's going to be so much value for that. They jacked out. I think they realized. Okay, how do we play it? Do we trash that? Seems expensive. Like, we could score this out. I, I think we trash it. We have to trash rogue trading next turn, though. And then then maybe put the bloop over the server and just, like... And I know it's a fake uh, ice, but... Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. That was an expensive turn. And merely scoring this is just credit neutral. Uh, we're not in a rush to do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's funny. I, I was like, oh, yeah, we're not playing sports metal, even though I have Hyperloop. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes you feel better scoring this out. Yeah, Concerto Megalol, I'm very surprised. Obviously, they have big cards in their deck. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Amina's probably the most expensive. I don't think there's any eight costers. Maybe they're on Femme. But yeah, like, maybe Femme. Concerto was just run, draw a card. Um, hmm. Is that good enough? Kind of on the verge, maybe, but probably not. Just get some tokens. Yeah, we have to watch out for that. The Amakua. Yeah. So they're still tagged. <clears throat> I think we just scored that out. That seems bad. Honestly, I think Tag Me Zaya might have room for one of reprise. I think so, especially because you mm-hmm. you're, you can burst dig like kind of on demand with jailbreak yeah. or uh, mm-hmm. what's it called. Um, I think reprise is better than it, the amount of play it's saying. I put it in every criminal deck <laughs> because I miss Layla. Layla, why am I mispronouncing things? I guess the red level. I don't know what red level gives us tricks to. I think it just we we probably should have played a click listy for credit then. That's too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's see if they allow it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Whatever. I kind of like Odoroshi. Nato, how's it going? Yeah, Odoroshi. Hey. Is that still legal? Is that? Yeah. It where must was be. Odoroshi? It's not Honor and Profit. I thought it was. Odoroshi's neat mm-hmm. if you're running a lot of traps, right? I don't see it's best for its draw mode. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, we, we just wanted to not waste it. So, Seems they fine. know this. We can't resist. Managarm, <laughs> they can't trash that, which is kind of cool. Mm. They're accessing with one and two. They also mm. now have Amaku on three. So, uh not too much meridian on four is the real punishment here but they're not getting as many accesses as they might in some matchups because mm-hmm. of um obvious reasons if they trash that we could have hangeki them into the core damage which mm-hmm. is really cool so i think we just want to set up a server let's uh we need to find ice so we can res our bloops no this is ugly yep so we want to keep that i think we want to throw that out uh we can draw once more because we get a nightmare archives that's perfect i think we just put this on archives yeah that's just because fair. we have to that's keep fair. the turtle that's out fair. So let's get rid of this. Uh, I guess, do we get rid of the uh, Ikawa? It's too expensive for I us to score out, I but it seems safe it in HQ as much as no, they're running HQ mm-hmm. every turn. So I think the Mana Garment Essential is like a good way to for it, for them to trash it. I think that's the mm-hmm. best case. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, that's we can't true. let them trash the Spin Doctor. Force them into a trash. Yeah. <clears throat> the thing is like with one ontological out, okay, we'll raise the Meridian. Yep. Four strength. So it's up to them. Either we gain four credits and the run or they take a negative agenda point. Which, in which case, stock buyback becomes... Uh... Fair bit better. Okay. Buyer. So are we getting our money? Come on. Nice. Ooh, okay. That's fine by us. Maybe. So who trashes this? Nobody. It's just added. Because mm-hmm. if they trashed it, that triggers Hangeki. Mm-hmm. Well, Hangeki is so much more nuanced. Okay. Nightmare Archives. Okay. They also, you never trash this card because it's removed from game. Mm-hmm. Generally when it's accessed. So now they're on zero agenda points, right? Like this is when it, all right, they're going in. They're going <laughs> okay. deeper. Draw a card. C2. Again, they'll get two cards from Zaya, which is good. And we have to get ice here. Come on, trash something. 
this is unfortunately as you, they did this unfortunately is a bit hard for them because like they're trying to hit r d while there's five points out of the game mm-hmm. right like that's such yeah. a huge difference but now they can shuffle and go back i guess we'll yeah, allow them eight to. points out of the game really yeah mm-hmm. yeah now we're ahead on points suddenly it's pretty wild so they're going back last click they can take a core damage here really easy oh it's a nightmare archives <laughs> Oh, uh, negative gen points, and it's back. And it crashed something, so uh, yeah. Okay, well, we have to purge next turn. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's give him core damage. So we're going to ice this up. Mm-hmm. We're going to core damage, and then we're going to play stock buyback. So we don't have to res this, right? Yeah, that's brutal. Uh, no, I'll no I guess it. not. Okay. Whatever, it plays around diversion. I Fair. mean, falsified. All right, so the other axe is this. So we pay two credits to give them core damage because they trashed a card. Such a cool interaction. This does get RFG'd, right? Oh, because it gets added. So it's either do you want a negative point, which or gives us more money or core damage. Yeah. yeah. It's neat. So how many negative <laughs> points can they have? Uh, we only have one Giordano left, and that'll be our most of replay. And then it's really weak to pinhole, so we have to go fast. Mm-hmm. You don't need to res. Actually, resing was wrong because we showed them what it is. Yes. Yeah, it so cha- that was a mistake. the decision process. They shouldn't have seen what this was. But you're was. being nice to them and letting them know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely shouldn't have read that because then they'd have to be like, I don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. So it's up to them again. They could be on negative two agenda points. And I don't know if it's possible to <laughs> mathematically not have enough uh, points to win. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, stock uh, back for 15. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Fight 15. Turn six. Play around that somehow. It was obviously an upgrade. Yeah, it was obviously an upgrade. Mm-hmm. And so may- like, maybe it's a bluff. It's a mana garment. They could have <laughs> taken it. Yup, says Dead Pixels. Sorry, Dead Pixels. Uh, this is how we lose subscribers. <laughs> SBB, is, I, I do think stock buyback is kind of nonsense. Yeah. There might be enough negative I can't score out. This is really interesting, too, to see like a list like this, whether mm-hmm. you can play Global Food Initiative, which <clears throat> lowers the agendas in the deck. Mm. Is there a chance that they can score out? Like the yeah, amount of accesses it's... they need to score out is so high. I think it's theoretically possible that, that there's a world where they cannot score. Yeah. For sure. Lost our Managram again. We only have two more recursion pieces. One of my like pet, very dumb ideas. Oh, stop. <laughs> uh, of like a, a custom anarch ID was one called X Nihilo that like never stole agendas. Every time they steal, they would, they just forfeit the agenda and gain like a huge like tempo rush. It's poisonous. So it's just, yeah, exactly. So it's just like it's just about getting the corp to a point where they have to concede rather than winning yourself. All right. Yeah. We, we don't need the money. We just need up. This is so bad. They've taken no like court. they know that they we can they can just run HQ over and over. That again. is that's a that's quite unfortunate. Yes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh. The mana harmonics here. No perch. No, the perch doesn't matter, right? Like they yeah, know we're it, not resing this. Mm-hmm. They hit biotic stock. They literally hit the two non interactables. <laughs> that's so wild. Yeah. Well, but they know we drew a lot. Like this makes sense. Ikua. Okay, that they have to take a core damage if they steal it, mm-hmm. which means we can fast advance the ontological next turn. But they can choose not to steal this because it has an additional cost. Mm-hmm. But if they do take it, they're on one agenda point. Yeah. It's the only like they have to steal the Ikawas. They have to. And then they have to take a core damage, which mm-hmm. means we biotic out with infinite economy. Yep. Let alone now, everything we want to do, we should have just put on the Hendrick, probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They didn't steal. Wow. Okay. That's again respecting. I mean, just okay, so, so put down I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't literally know. don't know. Like, like uh, how much more ice do we have? Like purging would be nice. But like purging, they know they can run through this. Like, <clears throat> mm-hmm. We didn't res this when they had no breakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't care about Amina anymore. But it's kind of hard to navigate this. Ikawa install advance advance, right? They could probably do that. Mm-hmm. Draw more, you'll need one more SVB as econ. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> don't need all the econ. It's just like mm-hmm. we have to draw for ice here. We don't have it. Like, uh. <laughs> So, like, we have to put something in the remote. I think we just put this in the remote server. Maybe they mm-hmm. get enough agendas. I'm like, okay, yeah, gain 15 again. Whatever. But now, like, running HQ Sing 2, at least we have yeah. the Nightmare in there. Man, the bloops are just a liability, aren't Admittedly, they? though, once we purge and we get these rest. Yeah, once we get once good. we get a yeah. pulse. We always get one of the three pulses. This, game, this, this deck needs a wave. Okay, so they're going to lose their whole turn here. And again, mm-hmm. if this is an agenda, they take core damage guaranteed. Oh, no, actually, matters the order. So it's Rashida. Mm-hmm. What a card, I know. Pay two? Yeah. So they've traded their whole turn. Like, that's the best case for us, is they trade the whole turn. And of course, we have three Hendrix. Mm-hmm. All right, so we got away with that. Ugh. <laughs> We're not winning <clears throat> the votes over because we want ice. 
install Hangeki. You don't install. Yeah, sorry. I, I know what you mean. Mm. All right, we're going to bluff. This is the worst one to do it on. It really is, yeah. But the thing is, it's they always... have to steal this. Like, if we yeah. do the Ikua, all right. So now they probably don't run it because they think mm-hmm. it's some garbage yeah, trap I think or it's a nightmare. One. And immediately we have to biotic this thing out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Spin Doctor, we have to shuffle into Giardano's and immediately Pinhole Threading eats us alive. Uh, so what do we put back? Actually, maybe it's Hendrick, but I don't H- think the H- wind Hendrick and. We have two more Hendricks. I think this is such a good card. Okay, so Giordano and Manicarm. Oh, yeah, the two Giordanos, sure. Kind of sick deck has both Hengeki and Americas. Dana, this was this is all Solomir. <laughs> this is not us. But yeah, how's it going, by the way? Uh, it's a Meridian. We'll res that just to start taxing some amount of credits. <laughs> uh-huh. I mean, yeah, they can just pay one, but still. Fire all? No, they might just... There's no way they're taking this. I think it is... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Can they win? Is Dead Pixels... Okay. Is this tilting that we're seeing now? No, no. It's, we're just kind of exploring. Like, I'm into yeah. this. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're just exploring how many negative points they can take like at some point there will not be enough agendas for mm-hmm. either player to win and if yes. that's the case we the, lose the corp, the corp yeah. loses. that's true they're playing my deck they're playing ex nihilo okay well, getting one of these out is unfortunately like a bit rough that mm-hmm. is the cool play though that we we, we got them there mm-hmm. i think they're going to test the limits of the deck yeah and i'm totally with it like mm-hmm. it's a casual game do whatever you want <laughs> forward slash summon data dealer we don't have um uh any tag punishment right like we can't punish this two tag flow mm-hmm. Admittedly, they're a tag me deck. And so, like, Obelisk will come down. We have to trash that. Yeah. As admittedly, no, actually, we don't. We're not taxing them out. Can we? We can dr- click let's see, draw two. <laughs> oh, my lord. Yeah, get rid of that. We'll put this in server one. <laughs> and then I guess Nightmare Archive on it? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, why not? I think you could have biotic the Vitruvius because I don't think they ever would run it. Uh, yo, Terrence, I think you're right. We could have got that out, and then that keeps that in the deck, mm-hmm. so they respect core damage more. Yeah, 100%. We should probably should have just do the top deck. No. Oh. All right. They're up to negative one agenda points, folks. We only have one biotic, too, and there's only one card that recurs it, which is Spin Doctor. With an mm-hmm. open R&D and 17 cards left, like, it's only a matter of time. Uh, this doesn't do anything, behind you, if they don't run. Shadownet better than Data Dealer. Oh, I forgot about Shadownet. Mm, yeah, yeah, Shadownet Shadow was, Shadow yeah. was a great one. Why install Nightmare Archive? Because we want them to run it and we're going to trash it eventually. Mm-hmm. Like, we're, oh, there we go. There we go. So that's, we have to get this down something. and we have to purge. Okay, so, so put it down. We also know they didn't run this. So, like, <clears throat> we could, in theory, uh, jam here. I feel like we should have drawn first. At this point, it's too late. We definitely want to click for credits. Yeah, we'll draw and then we'll put another ice on, I guess, HQ. Let's do stock buyback. We don't need the money. We okay. don't need the money, man. <laughs> Mr. Moneybags. We can't spend Once credits. again, patreon.com slash oh, Metropol Grid. Let us get a Gloomhaven room. You don't want that on R&D? Oh, what? The Pulse? Why not? Like, can we hover over Pulse again? I, I'm not sure. This might have drawn in. Amina's totally fine. Like, we have infinite credits, but mm-hmm. we just need, like, if we don't res our harmonic, <clears throat> we never res our bloop, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think there's a way around it. Vitruvius? And Geki. I'm seeing the future where we just, like, alternate bloops. Alternate bloops. Just bloops, like, beep, 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 bouncing back and forth. Oh, it's really funny, mm-hmm. yeah. We actually can't do that. How much does a stock buyback get us? Yeah, I think with they the buyback, cards. like, we don't care about Amina. That's a 29-card stock buyback. 29 cards to a click. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be worried about Amina Solomy. This does look like a double Hendrick mm-hmm. or Hendrick. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Giordano. Yeah. By the way, they do have seven actual agenda points and we have three. Oh. We do have enough in our hand to win, but like we are getting to a point where potentially we run out. Yeah. If they steal anything of, of what's in our hand. Okay. We purge here. Yeah. Cause now, now we can actually start keeping them out. Like this is too many cards in square right now. Like we have to do the math. Okay. So agendas here. This is really, there's no expand button here. There's mm-hmm. for the hand. So two, four, five, six, seven actual points, right? Yep. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that means there's only five points left in R&D. It's one Ikua and then one ontological. Mm. No, they have one. It's one uh, luminal. Mm-hmm. Like we're getting to the point. Okay, so now we get the pulse rest. So now they have to respect bloop. So they have to find their breaker. They lose a click to this. Amina breaks it for two. We lose <clears> one, <throat> but like whatever. Mm-hmm. If they trash a card here. We can geki them into Hendrick. The trash is your Donna. Oh, <laughs> R&D is our weakness for Ugh. sure. Like that card was. No, no, no. Remote. They, they, we will hang geki them now. That is, Classic. that's how we do it. 
All right. What do we do? Hangeki. It's oh, a well, we, oh, we don't have Hendrik. Well, put down Hendrik and Hangeki. I just don't think this has an impact on the game, but like I hear you. Mm -hmm. And then no matter what, just put down. Hey, Optical, how's it going? Recently started <laughs> playing Startup. Love it. Startup is really fun right now. Mm. Hey, Optical. Welcome to the channel. Um, I'm having a lot of fun at Startup. We're doing Standard right now. Um, This deck is like, I guess there's big parts of it that are not. It's a weird one. Build, it's a weird but one. But it's very strange. All right. Uh, stock buyback is now a 32 credit uh, econ card. Metagame is so great. If we were playing Building a Better World, we'd get 33 credits. Think about that. Is it? It is a transaction, isn't it? Yep. There's a counter surveillance. So they're going to go in and they can flush HQ. Mm. And they can see a lot of cards <clears> here. <throat> Actually, only four, which is pretty sensible. Now, there's only two agendas in R&D. Yeah. Agenda, they steal uh, both of them? I think they're trying to steal all the agendas. Yeah. But we have the agendas in HQ. Am I just hanging into the Vitruvius? Yeah. Well, we ended up doing mm. it without risking it. Rashida gets trashed. If the Spin Doctor gets trashed, we don't have a Biotic. They stole mm. the Luminal, so they're okay. at two points. If they stole two agendas, they weren't be wouldn't have been able to pay for the tax. So they mm -hmm. wouldn't have taken a single core damage. And a single core damage is actually not that impactful because we have to install advanced advance. Pulse for the remote server actually would be really good mm. because it robs clicks. But again, it's hard to close the game here. Like it's mainly mm. like what they're doing. They're not winning the game anytime soon, but, but they might we. they might make us lose, yeah. is what's happening here. Like we have to I win don't, in a couple turns. Yeah. Huh. But I mean, we've got, we've got a three, two in there. We're, 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 we're on our way. We're on our way. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, what, what, come on. Uh. <clears throat> Stock about big money is almost gone. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Gondrich? Yeah. We'll, we'll get yeah. a new one, but uh, it's getting there. We are losing a credit turn. Probably AA the Kawa. Yeah. Well, after we scored the Vitruvius, we have to. Yeah. I would love to get another pulse there. We also know in the top three cards, there's no uh, trashables or well, trashables that they cared about. So no mm -hmm. Giardano, no uh, Spin Doctor. Mm. Uh, those are really important. They don't have enough econ to deny a Manta click. Oh, that's really funny about the Manta click. But <laughs> like with the Manta click, yeah. we can't do anything, right? Like with a just slightly turn, more efficiently. Yeah. Prize. Whoa, sick! But where's their run? What's the run going to be? Oh, they did decline to make a run. Yeah, that's okay, interesting. That's pretty cool. That's really sick. Good for them. Dope. <laughs> so reprise they played after the run. So we talked about how Tagme should be playing the card, and it mm -hmm. seems really good there. So I think we have to push the ontological. Sure. And I think we'll just take all the money in the world. Uh, yeah, we don't want to draw necessarily. There we go. So and this is obviously dodgy because <clears> they <throat> won HQ and will not win, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, no, they could win. Yeah, we they shouldn't could. have done that. That's very funny. That's... I just want to stock buyback by, by for 36, but that can't be the line. What's cooler than stock buyback for 40? <laughs> I don't like this card. I don't think this should <laughs> exist. We didn't shuffle here, so this axis is... I don't know what this mm -hmm. is. Making us lose a credit doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. I like Dana, oh, I'm a cool, uh, Dana over here with the uh, social network references. <laughs> oh, is that what that is? Yeah, right. Isn't that like what's quoted than a million dollars? Yeah, two million dollars. It's that's not it. So inside job boomerang, I'll deal with the blue relatively <clears> well. <throat> mm -hmm. uh, the ontological, we actually can't score out. Why do we do this? <laughs> Wait, why do we do this? Did we well, think they take core damage? We're just assuming they're going to take a core damage. Why wouldn't they? I think we want them to run this so that we can mm -hmm. Manta Grid the Vitruvius because they're set to Manta Grid. Yeah. Surprised you didn't advance the Anto? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that is surprising. Hmm. Isn't that weird? Well, we're going to draw an ice and then we're going to put out the drone server one and then we're going to advance. Okay, they think it's an Ekoa. That actually <laughs> makes them more likely to run, but mm -hmm. yeah, this is not right. Ah, oh, man. I do think the fact <clears throat> that this becomes one of the best economy options in the game is probably an issue. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, I don't think yeah. anyone likes this sort of game with 12 agendas. So it, it, by the way, if they steal the two two-pointers, they can't win, but also we are now denied the win, right? Yeah, yeah. in terms of agendas okay. left in the deck. Yeah. like So okay. if they steal that Anto and if they steal the Vitruvius, that's it. So us. there's nine here. 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And there's one more one-pointer, I think. Oh, is there a... I think there's one more of the Hyperloop. Oh, Hyperloop, yeah. Yeah. I think Bifurcation is totally playable mm -hmm. in the deck. I don't know why we do Hyperloop instead. Like, obviously, it's an economy card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one more Hyperloop. But, like, they think this is an Ikoa, and I don't know if they want to interact. Obviously, two ice is an issue, too. Um, They <clears> haven't <throat> produced a... Oh, they have produced a paperclip. Admittedly, it's just Meridian. Mm -hmm. And we haven't seen an Obelisk, which is kind of wild. Hmm. 
The oh, fact yeah, that this true. game in the math chat stream kind of breaks the point. I know. And that's <laughs> that um that what's it called? That machine, the code we have does mm -hmm. not calculate this. Okay, so if this sticks, we win. So the question is how we do it. I think we push out the Ikawa so they run it because mm. they realize they have to. Yeah, because that puts and them in a bad position. Because then... that will hit the Manta. And if the Manta fires, we then win. Then we get insta-win. Yeah, yeah. past finesse. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. I would not want to play against this. Rogue trading? Did they just... Oh, they had that on the table? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't realize that. All right. There's not enough points to win on R&D. Yep, this is fine. We don't win, though. Well, no, we win because we have a 3-2 there. That's no, a oh, oh, fuck it that's fine. Three, I think yeah. if they do this, they don't like we do advance events, kill that. Yeah, I, I think this is uh this is the end of them. Right? Like they just can't win here. Yeah. Trashing the spin doctor would be a win. <clears throat> mm -hmm. They also have to take core damage, which doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh scratch, we're doing standard and we're kind of breaking the limits of negative agenda points in the runner's There's square. No yet. more agendas in R and D. Mm -hmm. They still need to steal this Ikawa and they have to steal every agenda in the game mm -hmm. to win. Okay, let's talk about what we have to put in remote. Advance, server. advance. We can do we, this. do we put the manogram down? I'm just thinking, do we have one? No, we don't have one. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah, we do. Yeah, for sure. How's it going, Scratch? RLC the manogram? Oh, we RLC the manogram. We could have trashed a rope trading. Yeah, that mm. was probably correct because yeah. this. Oh, I, I, always, I always forget about the that uh, part of red bubble clearance. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. We should have got this down <clears throat> clicklessly mm -hmm. using the flexibility of this card, and then that would have gone. Appreciate it. I'm a new subscriber. Got the course set when it first came out and then slept on the game for its whole existence to sign show plate. You guys have been to Oh, cool. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, you probably recognize, like, wait, I could have done this a while ago. The game yeah. is absolute slapper. Yeah, welcome, well, welcome to, the to the game. If you have any questions, uh, please let us know. I actually mentioned when I was introducing myself at Eidos Montreal, I, you know, other people knew 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 that day we're talking about oh well i worked on this thing at wb games or something like that I'm like well my previous gaming experience is working on the card game netrunner oh. and and one person in like the chat of this like 500 person zoom meeting was like oh you know i bought the course set i never gave it a shot i'm like there's a lot of people oh. picked it up because it was huge on bg yeah exactly yeah, yeah. It, was, it was really big even you got the whites to join it nice really nice we're soft on hq a bit yeah we are a bit soft they can't mm -hmm. deal with a bloop which like is okay mm-hmm uh, they know that it's not an R and D unless it's the bottom card. They know we have an Ico on hand though, which clearly looks like this. Mm -hmm. But I think like to be able, if they steal both agendas, we can see. Like we literally can't win. Well, yeah, yeah, we, both we, we have to. We mathematically can't yeah. win, but they won't steal. Question for new player: Are there any corps that try and win the game proactively, or are they all just trying to kill the runner? <laughs> In like corset, Jeff, or like, yo, I know Jeff, you found this too because I I watched the vod of your stream, and like so much of what I'm playing into standard right now is all like either asset spam or something like this. Like nobody is playing mid range HP. Mm -hmm. Nobody is doing the thing that's probably really good right now. Mm -hmm. Cost so many clicks probably to get the Ikua and Vitruvius. Yeah, it's really hard. Obviously, I think the pulse... Ikua is basically impossible. I think. Uh, yes, with Ikua and all, with like with that, and mm -hmm. even if they do it, the Manta Grid get, catches them, mm -hmm. so they have to flush everything. Reprise is, I think, their only option here, mm -hmm. but it's still very hard to do, and they know they need to get to five. I meant on your stream tonight. On our stream tonight, we played only Corp, right? Yeah. Well, he, he's asking like, if 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 a new player looks at this stream tonight, what, oh, do, they, what do they see? Yeah. No, Corp's no. Like, this is really bad. Th but, th this is a stream where we're like testing the limits of what a fun Corp is. But we've been pretty transparent about that. Yeah. I think they have it, right? Mm -hmm. So we sync their programs. Oh no, we have the Manta Grid. We actually win on Manta Grid. Hmm. Manta Grid's gonna win us the game. Yep. That is so undeniably cool. Fire all. Okay, they take a core damage for the first time. We trash two programs? Okay. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Why not? That seems nice. Continue the movement. They can't afford Managarm. Oh, they can't even afford Managarm. I kind of want to win off Man. Yeah, uh, well, we, we have our choice of how we win here. Unless, of course, they run HQ right, right away. <laughs> that would be just... I'm going to try and win off Manta. Yeah. Do so it. I think that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I think that's more interesting. Because that means we actually have scored or stolen every single agenda in the game. Mm -hmm. Like, literally every agenda is going to be on the table if they take the Sikwa. They're going to take two more core damage, mind you. They're actually almost uh, flatlined. Because <laughs> the Hendrick fires. Wow. Mm -hmm. The Mana Garm, they can't trash. It doesn't matter. Didn't even resonate. Let's see if Manta Grid is even, like, on JNet. All right. I think Manticore is not, not active. There's a chance Manticore is not active. Oh, no, it works. It works. Yeah. It works. All right. Well, that's cool. That is undeniably weird. GG. That is what so a, What weird. a weirdo. What a weird game. Every <laughs> single agenda is in 
a sport area. Mm-hmm. Like, what is this? <laughs> Thinking about going to Pittsburgh Spring GNK, but they have no null signal games products. I exclusively play on JNet, but I have full FFG collection. Is there a way to proxy NSG cards in time? 100%. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, proxy Nexus has up to date. Uh, I don't know. Um, also, you, you can download the PDFs from uh, Null Signal Games' website. Yes. Like, so, just look up the product and they will have free PDFs that you can print out. It's super important to know uh, proxies are allowed at all levels. So if you mm-hmm. have access to a printer, um, you can either go to the Null Signal Games and they have print-to-play PDFs. Uh, mm-hmm. Proxy Nexus allows you to, I think, upload decks and then just print what you need. But yeah, you can do it. All the last cards are, yeah, uh, <laughs> the Giardano, the Hendrick, and the Echo. There's nothing left. Hmm. You were close. If you could get the Ikula and run HQ, you win because I run it out of points. For what it's worth, like they were actually close to winning the game. As, yeah, as yeah. It was, it was actually looks. like not only would they've been on six agenda points, technically they would have been on seven. So obviously yeah. they win there. Mm-hmm. But even if they steal these agendas, mm-hmm. like we just don't have enough points to win. Yeah. I guess Proxy Nexus is not up to date. Oh, but yeah, but yeah, just go to Null Signal Games. Um, and look for their PDFs of the of the uh, sets. Yeah, they have pay what you want print and plays. Mm-hmm. So if you're waiting on cards, definitely do that. Yeah. yeah. And if you do pay, then you contribute to someone having a, a Gloomhaven room in their mansion. Stop. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, yeah. No? I don't think so. Well, besides uh, you eventually flatline. Oh, that's a good point. Mark says, uh, just reach out to someone in Pittsburgh. Uh Oh, yeah. that's true. Because you know, a lot of metas might have spare Null Signal Games cards that they can sell or or, or maybe uh, lend or borrow. Yeah, yeah. They choose you to. Mm-hmm. All right, our opponent was pretty good spirits about that. And it's actually mm-hmm. like very fascinating. Um, whether that deck is like the thing to beat. I think so much today we've been playing decks and trying to figure out what the thing to beat and then get absolutely hosed <laughs> by like reasonable yeah. tech. So like oh, whatever. Man. I respect the choice to win versus Manta Grid, my pet Jankard. Yo, mm-hmm. Manta Grid seems okay. And if you're going fast enough and people are like clicking through Fairchilds, why not? Mm. It's just kind of hard for that to line up to work. But uh, I've enjoyed that card. It was one of the cards that showed up at Worlds on stream. And like I knew the text <laughs> and I was so excited to be like, mm-hmm. oh, that's Manta Grid. Let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. What, what it is. Manta Grid is Flashpoint Cycle. Uh, I don't know. It's okay. the, like Nihongai, Manta, and all those bad grids came out together. Mm. Or not Nihongai, Neo Tokyo, I think is the one. Nihongai is a different one. No, Nihongai Toko came out way earlier. Nihongai was the bad one that came out around then. I think there was a bunch of bad grids that came out in Red. Well, we can just find. Maybe it's ready. I guess we. I guess we have access to the tools. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Flashpoint. Flashpoint. So yeah, mm-hmm. enjoy it as it is. There were a bunch of grids here that came out. Um, almost none of them saw play. I don't mm-hmm. actually remember all the grids that came out of the cycle. And there was like an HP grid in like oh, no. the Genesis cycle that was pretty. That was a lot. River like- Valley. It would rear valley, yeah. Yeah, but that just cost them clicks. It just cost them clicks, yeah. yeah. Or to run the server. I forget what it was. Yeah, it, it was kind of neat. Yeah, Neo Tokyo is also really bad. Now, Hongai is like confusingly bad. Like very interestingly, creatively not good. <laughs> like it's hard to put that mm-hmm. many words and then still not have an effect that matters. Mm-hmm. It's fascinating. At least the tra- res to trash cost is good and the art is quite uh, nice. The art's pretty Vico, very pretty. like I don't know. Has Vico done a lot of art for this game? Oh, cool. Okay, some interesting cards. Yeah. I mean, cool preemptive cards. action, everyone knows that one. So, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's neat. <laughs> okay. Um, that's going to be hey. it for tonight. Sorry yeah. about that. Um, if you endured <laughs> most of that. Sorry for this stream, everybody. Sorry with that had to happen, I guess. Uh, do we have any plugs? Uh, yeah, we're going to have a gameplay video up on Monday where mm-hmm. we're playing Alice Merchant in Standard and having a great time. It was actually like, was my surprise. Let's play something a bit more weird than, um, than uh, Hoshiko. And I had a really good time with that. So, that's mm-hmm. getting edited together. <laughs> apologies accepted uh i'm gonna have the video talking about agendas uh, again i'm hoping that maybe someone in the comments can give us a really good finite answer of what our problem is our mismatch between our math stuff if you're wondering what that is you might have to watch the vod because we are working on a thing to talk about agendas mm-hmm. and um we should release that around like the up. one hour 10 minute mark there's a lot of math talk something so about look, that. look out for that and then around the one hour 30 minute mark there's a lot of uh zor pilgrimage of the swarfs talk yeah yeah they're paying you aren't they yeah they are <laughs> God, I wish they were. It's like one of those AI generated cards that almost makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of does. Yeah, exactly. Like, it. like yeah. It, it's like, yeah, I would mark down fair. Seeing this <laughs> Not... deck across the table would be as painful as TSK and Solo, to be honest. Yo, I'm waiting on s- s- <laughs> content producers like Arkham Podcast. Mm. I haven't heard anyone like talk about TSK and sit down to talk about mm. it. And it's a hard thing to talk about. 
because people have neither not played it or seen all of it. So no one <clears> wants <throat> to sit down and talk about it. But I think it's the most divisive Arkham thing. And I got my opinion. I saw so, I saw someone on Reddit say it was their favorite so far. And I believe it. I have yeah. no doubt that a lot of people will be their favorite thing. Mm-hmm. For me, I think feel differently, but I haven't seen all of it. Hey, well, you should go on an Arkham podcast already. Just I like have... you, we know we have friends who like... Ha- I mean, we we know that you have friends. Pat, of Pat's that. been trying to sell me this whole stream with his um his room for uh, what's it called, Rivendell. Yeah, well, you need a Riven. You have a Rivendell Lego set that takes up like thirty square foot feet of uh, we don't have real it. estate, and you just that's going to be it. Uh, oh, thanks so man. much for dropping by. Hopefully, you're having a good time. Thanks to all the people we played games against. Um, other stuff that we plugged. Uh, I we have the link to it, but the video that you sent put out uh, earlier yep. this week is quite good. And of course, uh, buy any Idos Montreal video games. Uh, support that studio. They really needed you know a small indie studio that hired a great new writer. And of course, pick up the Thessaly trilogy by Joe Walton, friend of the channel, friend of the stream. <laughs> all uh, right, I'm you uh, And you know what? Uh, my my uh, friend Cynthia Humble. Oh, bye everybody. <laughs> Ciao. Yep.